Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. It's Mr. T back after almost a month being gone, I think. Sorry to keep you guys waiting for so long. It's a little weird to be doing this again. You can see things have changed a little bit around here. Number one, uh, I'm sporting this pretty snazzy beard, huh? What do you guys think? Uh, it's, it's really not very impressive. Um, I think this is about all I'm going to do. Man, it's just a little bit of peach fuzz here, but... Um, I'm just trying to change things around a little bit. And look behind me at my beautiful new studio, the brand new Chromeworks Studio, a multi-million dollar facility. <laughs> it's fabulous. Look at this. Look at all those TV sets. <laughs> it's really impressive, huh? Um, so uh, just look at online, Aiden saying, what happened to his setup? Yeah, you like my new studio, Aiden? It's very impressive. Um, so... Uh, we're back, we're back, we're back, and um, I'm trying to figure out how to do this differently a little bit now. We obviously can't do these daily live streams. I've been trying to find a way to get a uh, day job going here. Um, so far, not so great. The, the problem is that you guys are my community. You're the guys who, um, who watch me all the time, who are interested in what I'm doing. I've been trying to take the stuff that I taught you guys here and turn it into little courses and then teach it to other kids um, through the community center here in town. And um, people have been able to book tickets with that. But the problem is those people don't know who I am and they don't know what I'm teaching. And so there's a bit of a mismatch here where I'm trying to teach this really cool stuff to kids who haven't seen me before and they're not interested. You guys who want to see me are not getting enough chances to hang out with me and do coding. So I'm really just trying to figure out, oh, Kean figured it out. He said that the background, you know, that's right, actually, Kean, it's not, um, it's not actually a studio. So I've just, it's, it's called a virtual set, right? It's a background behind my green screen that just uh, makes it look more official. I think it looks really neat though, eh? What do you, what do you guys think? Um, so when can I get a million dollars, says Aiden? Why does Aiden want a million dollars? All right, anyway, so uh, what was I saying? So I'm trying to figure out something that I that I can do during the week right now, uh, uh, and I'm gonna be modifying things as time goes on, but I, I wanna do some live coding with you guys and some other stuff where we're actually building things live online. It's kind of a summer camp type thing, and um, I'll be telling you guys some more about it in the next week or so. I'm just kind of working out plans, but I would like to get some of you guys learning with me during the week in kind of a summer camp format. If anyone's interested in that, let me know, and we can definitely talk about it. But but um, anyway, so things are in transition, and um, I think that uh, it's uh, going to keep changing until we figure out something that works, something that lets me teach and, uh, and make a living at this, and at the same time gives you guys a chance to do this. The one promise I'm going to make you, though, is that this um, live stream broadcast that I do is always going to be free. I'm not going to be charging money for this or anything like that. This is my chance to share my love of coding with you guys. Um, who I've come to know so well in the last couple of months, and um, I just want to keep doing that and keep building my audience. So um, we will uh, talk some more in the future about how things are going to go. Let's see who's online. Um, so, wow, we got a lot of people coming back. We've got Aiden. Good morning, Aiden. Kean's here. Um, and who else do I recognize on the list here? Okay, uh, okay and we got a couple of new people as well. I wanted to introduce you to Balin and his... Uh, brother Thane. They're brothers who live in Florida and um, they started looking at my stuff a couple of weeks ago I think uh, if, if I'm correct there and um, 
it has uh, been crazy for them. It, they seem to be in their everyday building stuff. They've been doing, uh, sending remixes off to me and working through my entire back course catalog. This happens to me every once in a while where someone discovers my content and then they just start going crazy doing all the scratch that they can. So welcome to Balin and Thane. Uh, Balin's on the YouTube chat here is Balin and his brother is um, under the name Retro Gamer. So if you see Retro Gamer, you'll recognize it that Thane. Um, Anyway, so, um, all right, what else do we want to talk about here? Today's kind of a weird session, right? I'm, I'm planning um, to um, do things a little bit differently. Let me show you my website and, um, and how I've been making changes there, and then we'll talk a little bit about, about how I want things to go moving forward. So uh, check out my new transition. I got something else to do here. Ready? Are you ready? Wait for it. Okay, here we go. What do you think of that? Anyway, so that's my new transition, just kind of playing around with it. Um, so um, this is my website that we're looking at here. I've been making some changes to it. It just starts off with the splash thing, but um, um, the, the important links here are the one here that says virtual camps. You can find at the top top as well. And this is where I'm um, advertising these courses at the Glebe Community Center. As you can see, um, there are courses that we, you guys have already done, right? Um, uh, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Asteroids, digital storytelling. It's all stuff that you guys have already done. And this has been the problem here is that the stuff that I'm offering is stuff that I can't really pitch to you guys. So, um, so I'm going to try and find some, come up with some content that you guys can actually um, work on if you're interested and that's what I'm going to be coming at you with in a couple of weeks. Um, over here under the live stream tab is where you're going to want to come just to get our regular lessons. You see the next lesson here. I'm going to have a link here with all their back lessons at some point. I haven't quite finished that off yet but you can see our today's lesson which is called Scramble is here and um, you can get to the live stream from here. You can download the cheat sheet and get the starter file. Now I don't want you guys who are online with me live here using the starter file. We're gonna be using a working file as usual. You guys remember the difference between the working file and the starter file is um, the working file is the version that I'm actually writing and making changes to live during the broadcast here. Um, Aiden's asking what we're doing today. We're doing an arcade game called Scramble. It's a scrolling space shooter game. So if you look at the um, at the spaceship here at the top, it's going across the screen and the background is scrolling like you're going over an endless alien landscape. There's going to be buildings appearing um, um, along the ground here and missiles that shoot up at you. You're going to be able to shoot with a laser beam and also drop bombs on the ground because the... Um, because the ground is set up in a strange, in, in a way so that it's scrolling across. There's different landscape as you go across the screen. Let me actually give you guys a preview of this since uh, Aiden asked. So you can see that I've taken a whole bunch of different ground tiles. I actually designed it in Photoshop. Let me show you the Photoshop file really quickly. Uh, right here. So you can see that I've, I basically designed the level map here. This is a gigantic um, Photoshop file here. It's about 5,000 pixels wide or whatever. And I just designed um, this background so that it would constantly go. And so our coding is going to make it go from one screen to the next. You're going to start here with your little spaceship. And when it gets to the end of the one screen, it'll put the other one in and the other one. It'll look like you're going over a giant landscape. Now, this is something you guys can do at home as well. And you can customize your own levels. Um, so it's going to be, um, so it really, uh, learning this technique of how to draw giant levels and cut them up into pieces is something that's really, really useful. I might do a little uh, seminar on how to do this uh, at some other point. I can't really teach you how to do the Photoshop part because not all of you guys have Photoshop. I'm pretty sure we can do it in Pixlr, which is our free photo editor as well. Um, but so anyway, back to the game, Aiden. Um, you can see that I've got these background tiles and you're going to, be able to fly over them. And sometimes the buildings are going to be inside these crevices, which means you can't shoot them with your laser. So we're going to have to drop bombs on things, basically. So we're going to learn a whole bunch of different stuff today. It's going to be a long lesson. Let me get back to my website again. So I'm still fig trying to figure out the, the uh, format for this. I used to be doing courses... Um, uh, oh, Chris says he has Photoshop now, and so he's going to be able to customize his levels. That's uh, that's great. I fin I didn't finish um, saying hi to everyone, by the way. I think I got everyone. Chris um, is here on Discord as well as on stage, and Peter is back here uh, in Discord as well. So welcome back to Peter as well. So we've got a couple of people here today. 
um, I think it's going to take a while to ramp back up again. All right, so as I was saying this, uh, the problem is that I've got, um, I'm trying to compress this stuff into one week. So, uh, or sorry, into one session. Now, normally if we do something that's three or four parts, it might take place over the course of three or four hours. I don't know how much time you guys have to give me on Saturdays to do this stuff. Um, so I've been trying to come up with some kind of a plan to, um, to kind of give everybody something a little bit of what they're looking for. So if you look at my website here uh, under the under the live stream section here, you can see there's a section that's uh, it's talking about the two different things we're going to be doing on Saturday. Firstly, there's the um, uh, Chromeworks Club, which is this, the broadcast that you're watching right now. Now we're not we're not actually doing two broadcasts today, but this is what it's going to look like in the future, basically. So at 10 o'clock, we're going to be doing this session here. Where we're hanging out and talking online and um, doing all the um, the fun stuff that we do here. That's a little bit more like a classroom, right? After we're done this at 11 o'clock, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to basically start teaching a lesson. Now, we'll probably start today's lesson a little bit earlier, but the idea is if you're not interested in all this classroom stuff and a lot of kids aren't, just don't bother showing up until 11 o'clock. Then at 11 o'clock, we're going to do a no-nonsense coding session that's going to be just straight coding with very little chit-chat. You guys will be able to ask questions and figure stuff out, and it'll be a lot the, the like the, what, the version that we had before, but there won't be um, any remixes or chatting and stuff like that. We're just going to go blast straight through and try to get through one entire project in one session. So warning, this is probably going to take two hours or probably more, I would imagine, because we're trying to get a lot of work done here. So um, what I would suggest is that if your Saturdays are busy and you don't have much time, what I would do is just um, come, if you're a fan of this classroom stuff, is come to the Chromeworks Club for an hour from 10 to 11. Hang out for the first few minutes of Chromeworks Presents, which is our lesson and then um, you can always catch the rest of it on YouTube right you can spend the rest of the week coming back and doing a little bit of time and working your way through these projects and that might be a way to do it I'm still interested in um, playing around with with this schedule and things might be changing as time goes on but uh, but we will see so um, let me unzoom here all right, so the other thing about Chromeworks Presents or 11 o'clock broadcast is um, I th we're gonna be doing something slightly different. Instead of having projects that we built in advance, we're gonna be doing more live coding. I have a, I've um, actually brought Jeffrey aboard. You guys all know my son, Jeffrey, who's 17 and is an absolute coding whiz. He um, has been doing live coding with some of you guys on Discord for a while. And we're gonna bring him onto the main broadcast. He's on vacation right now. He's actually out of town for a couple of weeks. But um, but he will be back two weeks from now, and we're actually going to put him on and have him teach these lessons just by the seat of his pants. So we're going to uh, get all the graphics and sound effects and stuff together to build a game, and then he's going to actually build it live for you guys. And I'm going to be in the background explaining stuff, and we're going to be talking about it, and it'll be the both of us kind of teaming up to do this broadcast. So that's when that's going to be the real launch of Chromeworks Presents, and that's going to be in about two weeks, guys. All right, so, um, sorry, I, uh, uh, Thane is trying to get my attention. What can I do for you, sir? What do you guys want? And Chris Copeman is also saying, Mr. T, Mr. T, so everyone's trying to get my attention. Uh, can someone tell me what it is that you're looking for? Um, anyway, so uh, Chris was saying um, he can customize his own levels and stuff using Photoshop now, and that's great. If anyone else has Photoshop too, I'm happy to um, every once in a while dip into it. Yes, Kian. Yeah. Hello? Kian? <laughs> okay, he said hello and didn't say anything. Okay. Anyway, um, I guess we should probably get to... Oh, I wanted to uh, show you guys a few remixes first. I'm, I'm just kind of trying to start off a little bit slow here so that um, other people who come in late can get started before our lesson. And I just really wanted to talk to you guys about a few things. Any... Uh, Anyone have any thoughts on what I've been saying here at all? Um, I'm, uh, I, I, I know I've gone over a lot and um, I'll try to summarize some of it later as well. But the, the bullet points are, oh, there you are, Kian, what's up? Kian, you keep saying stuff and then disappearing. Okay, 
forget it. Anyway, so the main bullet points, uh, just to summarize again, is we're going to be doing this broadcast Saturdays at 10 o'clock. It's going to be a fun classroom type thing like this. We're going to be doing a little bit of games. We're going to be showing remixes, showing uh, projects um, and other stuff like that. And then at 11 o'clock, normally we're going to start with the coding session. It's probably going to be a totally different file, right? Um, so you'll have to log into a different YouTube session for that one. It'll be saved as a different um, project in YouTube, basically. Because so you'll... you're ahead, I mean, you're behind on YouTube. So when I say it, it's after what happened. Oh, okay. And so it's too late, right? Yeah. It's a little bit tricky to watch on YouTube and Discord at the same time, right? And you guys uh, on, on uh, who've been doing this for a while will probably remember this, that, um, that YouTube's always like a minute behind everything that's happening um, in real time. Whereas you guys on Discord are watching everything live. But you, you're missing out on a lot, though, too. I think mostly it's good to watch this stuff on YouTube and then to chat on, um, on Discord with me when you can. But then the timings are always a little bit of a problem, eh? I haven't quite figured out the solution to this, but, um, but we'll keep working on it. Okay, so I want to start on this game in a couple of seconds. Uh, in a couple of seconds, I do have some remixes and stuff to show you and some files. But um, I think we'll just stick with the old-fashioned format right now. And... Um, and um, and we'll just uh, start teaching in. I'll just take some breaks every once in a while and show you the other stuff because um, I think you guys are probably eager to do coding. So I just wanted to get you guys to understand that we're not going to be doing coding um, right away during the day. We're going to be doing a couple of little things. I'm going to show you some fun scratch projects and show you some techniques. Mr. T, your mic's muted so we can't hear you on Discord. Really? Okay. I'm unmuted now. I am sorry, Chris. I, um... Okay, so we're unmuted now on uh, on Discord. Um, all right, anyway, so we're gonna get started today on this file. The one thing I wanted to show you guys first of all, though, is a little bit of a scratch lesson. We're gonna learn a little bit more about this, um, about this, about a new block. I'm gonna be actually introducing a new block to you every uh, every once in a while. And one of the blocks that we used um, in our last scrolling game, the um, which was the um, robot hunter game if you guys remember that one was a block called mod and I want to uh, show you guys before we get started I want to teach you a little bit about how that works okay so um, I've got a, just a sample file up here you don't have to follow along here I just want you to look carefully at what's going on so this is a standard kind of loop um, so we use mod with scrolling games and stuff like that because we want uh, to keep track of um, where um, the screen is scrolling to, but we would need it to roll over again. We basically need the computer to start counting. Like in this uh, example here, we have the computer counting from one to 10. We have a variable here called my variable. And right now it's set to zero. And uh, you can see here that all we're doing is we're changing it by one. We're counting up by 10. So if I click on the green flag here and we look at the variable, you'll see it'll just start going up and counting like this, right? Um, now, um, if I what I want though is um, is to organize it so that the number counts to ten and then doesn't go to eleven afterwards. It goes back to ten. Now, the way we would traditionally code that is something like this: if my variable is greater than ten, set it back to one again. And you can see here with my variable, it changes back to one again. So this is useful when we're doing scrolling games and stuff like that because we're trying to keep track of where we are on the screen on a giant screen that's five or 6,000 pixels wide, right? And we're doing it by just taking little tiny screens that are all like 400 pixels wide and sliding them over and then sliding another one over on the other side of that. And we're trying to overlap them with each other. In order to do that, we have to keep track of what the X position of these sliding tiles is and every time that they reach the end of the screen, we have to have them go back again. So we need to make our variable go, uh, go up to a certain number and then go back down to one again and then go up and keep counting that way. Now you can do that as I showed you guys with this kind of, uh, of an arrangement, but that's not gonna work with the coding that we're doing right now um, because the, uh, the variable for how much you're scrolling actually continuously goes up. We want that number to go up past 
the maximum number. So in this example, we want to keep counting past 10 because we want to know how we're trying to organize stuff across this gigantic screen. But we need to know where stuff is in relation to the screen. It's a little bit complicated, guys. But the whole point is to, to make this work, we have to have a number go back to, to one again when it reaches a certain number. Now, the way that we're going to do is using this new command called mod. You don't really have to understand the math in mod to um, to make it work. All you have to understand is, here's the, the block, by the way, it's here under operators, it's called mod. And um, it's, a, it's a math function that basically has to do with division and remainders, and you don't need to know how it works to actually use it. Um, so in this case, we've got a, uh, so I've disconnected this old block, now we're all working on this block here. So I've got a variable here called counter that again is going up but it doesn't go up to 10, right? It just keeps going. Now, I'm gonna take that and put it back into my variable. I'm gonna set my variable to the number that this counter is, because I'm gonna tell it to mod by 10. And all that, all that means is it's gonna count up using this number, but as soon as it gets to 11, it's gonna go back down to one again. And so if we look at my variable, you can and counter here, so let's just uh, restart the script again. You can see that when they reach 10, counter, the original variable is gonna keep counting up, but my variable goes back down to zero again. So that's all that mod function does. Um, and it's really, really useful for certain kinds of things. And scrolling games is the number one area that I found that is really, really useful. Um, okay, guys, um, so I see some people are asking for the, uh, for the link. Let me just send it back to you. Oh, actually, where well, this isn't the right version of the file. Okay, so let's go back to my working file here. And I think we're actually ready to start coding here, guys. I know you guys are impatient. Let me just have a look at the... Um, so, unfortunately, I don't have Maya here with me anymore. So I'm going to have a harder time keeping track of the chat. And uh, I'm hoping you guys are going to jump in and try and help me in the absence of that. If there's something important going on in the chat that I'm missing out on, you guys on Discord can help me out with that, by all means. Please... Um, Feel free to do it. Just um, you know, try to pick your right moment to interrupt me. Um, okay, so let's get going, guys, and actually start coding this game together. Um, so I'm gonna send you guys the file again. Just a second. Let's see, so I've pasted into the Discord chat. So one more time, let me give you guys the 411 on this um, one more time. So the working file is the file that I'm actually working on right now. I've shared it with you guys. And anytime you hit the refresh, you'll be able to see everything that I've done so far. So when I put a green flag down here on the screen, your file should be blank now if you open it up. But if I put the green flag here and then save my file, if you guys hit refresh on your end, you'll see that the green flag suddenly appears on your file. So it's a way for you guys to work a little bit like you're in Google Docs where you can actually um, see everything that I'm doing and be able to manipulate it. Every time you refresh, you lose the work that you did, but you get to get back to the point where I am. And so the way that I've been trying to teach you guys to learn this is don't pay so much attention. If you have trouble keeping up with me and getting all the blocks in place, don't sweat it, right? Just keep hitting refresh and I'll put the blocks down for you. And then you can play with stuff, add things, um, explore how this software works. And then when you get stuck, uh, if you make a mistake or fall behind, just hit refresh and then load the file again. And that way, uh, when you're working live with me, you can keep learning and spend less attention looking for blocks, right? You guys will all figure out your own way to do this, but um, I've, I've talked to a couple of kids who've been uh, really using this to their advantage, okay? So, um, where were we? We're starting off on this file now. Uh, uh, anything else that you guys need before that? It doesn't look like it. Okay, so uh, we've got a bunch of different sprites here, guys. Let me zoom in here and show you what we're working on. We've got the player sprite, we've got a ground sprite. We've got the couple of things that are on the ground. We've got fuel tanks, we've got enemy missiles, and we've got domes. So those are the three things that are gonna be populating the ground, basically. We're gonna be having these things sprinkled randomly across the ground as we go. We've got bombs that we can drop. We've got bullets that we can shoot. We've got an explosion here. Now I've tried two different ways to do explosions today and I'm gonna show you guys two totally different ways to make stuff explode. And um, you'll, you'll see that in a couple of minutes. I've got a fuel gauge here and let's have a look at that for a second. 
it basically has a bunch of costumes in it that make the fuel go from green and then make it go down, down, down lower, and then it turns yellow, and then eventually it turns red, and then your bingo fuel, you've run out of fuel, right? Uh, and so uh, the, the secret to, this, to making this game a little bit more challenging is that you're going to have to keep bombing these fuel tanks as you go by. And if you miss them, you'll eventually run out of fuel and then crash. You won't be able to, to maneuver anymore and you'll just hit the ground. You can't hit the ground in this game, by the way. So um, we're going to have to do some ducking and weaving inside these valleys to try and shoot stuff. This is a game I've been playing for a long time. Well, the, this is a variation on Scramble. Scramble is an arcade game from 1981. I I think I probably played it right back when it came out in 1981. It's a it's a fun little game. I like being able to um, to bomb. This was actually the uh, the very first uh, game ever with something called forced scrolling, which means you're in the middle of the map and the and the map is scrolling by as you're going over a landscape. This is actually the first time this was ever done in a video game. This game Scramble. So it's a little bit of video game history for you. And um, I thought I'd um, show you guys um, how to make it work in Scratch. Okay, so we're gonna start by coding our player, which is our spaceship. This is just an ordinary spaceship from scratch. Um, and uh, of course, it has some costumes. If you guys wanna play around with it and make it spin around, I know this guy has some costumes that make him rotate. We used these in one of the animation projects a couple of uh, months ago. Um, so feel free to, uh, to design uh, your own spaceship if you want, or to modify this guy's colors. You guys know that you can grab fill colors here and completely modify these things in any way you want. I can turn this into a green spaceship, for example, if I want, or whatever it is you guys are interested in doing. And you can also animate it to rotate around, which is cool if you um, if you start with the original sprite. I've already deleted those guys. Okay, let's um, start coding. So we, I thought I already put a green flag down here. I guess I put it in the wrong guy. So we're gonna grab a green flag and we're gonna put it right here on the ship. And we're gonna start programming our ship to start moving around the screen. Now the scrolling ground stuff is gonna come later. So just hang tight for that. Um, we, we're, we're gonna be um, hiding our player when we, um, when we kill him. So let's go ahead and put a show command. Then we're gonna go to looks and we're gonna go show. And um, so when he gets hidden after he dies, we want to make sure that he's visible again. Especially if you stop the game and restart it again, it won't uh, know how to show itself again, and then you'll end up playing with an invisible character. This is one of these glitches that um, I see a lot of beginning gamers get into, where you're, um, you're hiding stuff and then not resetting it again, and um, or not resetting your variables again at the beginning of the game, and it just ends up messing you up. So we try to do these tidy little things like show and reset variables right at the beginning to make sure everything always sets uh, the same way every time right it's like setting a table for dinner okay let's get some variables set up here we're gonna go down to our variables and I think I've got most of the variables of what we need in this game already set up so we're just gonna go set um, lives to let's give it ourselves three lives you guys know that um, if you're coding you can always change these numbers yourself if you want five lives or one life or whatever you can do that we have another variable here it's called scroll x and this is the secret sauce that we're going to use for our scrolling game scroll x represents where you are in this gigantic world that's five or six thousand pixels in size right it's so in scratch you have a screen that's only 480 pixels wide and it's actually the x var variable only goes up to 240 and then on the other side it's minus 240 so um scroll x is going to keep track of where we are across a gigantic screen so that number is going to keep getting higher and higher and higher as we scroll across the map and it'll actually keep scrolling because once we get to the end it'll just restart the map again and keep you scrolling so you'll be able to fly across this landscape basically forever until your computer dies um, okay now um, we're gonna start right in the middle of the screen so let's grab a motion block and I'm going to go go to XY coordinates of zero zero and that's the exact middle of the screen you can see when I click my green flag my guy pops over to the middle of the screen like that uh, we um, just to be safe here, I'm going to add one more block here that the blue block towards the bottom. There's something here that says ro set rotation style left, right. 
I'm gonna drag that in here and I'm gonna say don't rotate. And the reason for that is um, if we're doing anything where we change direction of our ship, I don't want our ship actually pointing down. I want it always scrolling to the right. Um, okay, now we're gonna grab a forever. Let's go over to our control blocks, grab a forever. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do is tell, the, tell everything so we're gonna do the same thing with every single uh, thing, with the player, with the fuel tanks, with the missiles. We're gonna tell everything to keep scrolling to the right in this imaginary world. So let me show you the block. It's just a variable. We're gonna go change scroll X. Change scroll X by two. And what that's gonna do is tell the whole world to move two to the left, basically. As we're moving right, everything else in the world is gonna move to the left. And so every time a new thing appears on the right-hand side of the screen, it's gonna slowly start working its way across the screen until it gets to the other side, right? So that's what's, that's the, this change in variable here is what's gonna move everything off to the side uh, when we start the game. Okay, let's get some movement going in here. I'm gonna grab an if statement, control, if. Let me save my game in case anyone's lost. So I'm gonna go if, um, now we gotta do all our directional keys. So I'm gonna go grab a right arrow key. Um, so we're gonna go to our sensing blocks, the light blue ones over here. And I'm gonna grab a block that says key space pressed. And I'm gonna change that to right arrow key. So let's go to right arrow key. So when I press the right arrow key, we're just gonna change our X position, which means move yourself to the right, change X by two. Now we're changing X and not scroll X here. So what that means is we're actually gonna to move to the right on the screen. It's gonna move you right in the world as well, but but if you as soon as you stop moving, um, the world's gonna continue moving past you. For that, so for that moment when you're moving to the right, you um, will appear to be moving faster across the, the landscape. And then when you go backwards, you'll appear to be moving slower across the landscape. It, it'll make more sense when we, once we get it running here. So when I press the, the right arrow key, uh, move to the right. And you can see that that's already working. I can hit the right arrow key on my spaceship. It's quite slow, right? Because you're, you're, uh, that, that speed is multiplying the speed of the landscape as well. Um, so we're moving two to the right. And when we move two to the left, we're actually going to be not moving at all because um, as the landscape is moving with us at two, we're gonna be moving at two backwards, right? And that means that we're just basically gonna be standing still compared to the landscape, not compared to the screen. Okay, um, now we've got to change this around a little bit because I want to, uh, right now it's possible to go right off of the screen, just like this, right? Um, oh, my wife is oh, don't sneaking in here trying to get something. <laughs> okay, she's mad at me now. <laughs> I'm just worried if the computer gets unplugged, <laughs> she's in big trouble. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to, um... oh man. Okay, sorry, I got distracted here. So you can see that we've gone right off the screen here. So we're gonna have to modify this so that we, when we get too far to the right of the screen, it stops us from going any further than that. So um, we're gonna add an if statement here inside of this um, if, uh, other if statement, and that's gonna check to make sure that we're not too far to the right. So let's grab a second if statement. I'm gonna go control if. Let's take this change X and put it inside just like that. And then we're gonna pop that in there. Okay, you with me so far, guys? Now we need a less than sign to put in there. So I'm gonna to go to my operators. I'm gonna grab a less than sign. And I'm gonna say, if my current X position is less than 200. So let's grab my X position, it's under motion. And that's right here at the bottom of our motion block. So if my X position is less than 200, then I'm gonna change X by two. And what that means is uh, X is equal to 200 is somewhere right, let me just uh, try and figure it out, is right here. So right now, my X is 197. If I hit the right key, I'll be allowed to move to the right. But as soon as my X hits 200, it's gonna ignore what's in here and it won't change your X value anymore. And so this is a way to kind of draw an invisible wall on the screen that we can't get past. Let me show this to you in action. So I'm moving to the right now 
and you can see that when I hit that invisible wall, I just stop moving. I can change that wall anywhere that I want. So if I, for example, change this number to 150 and then drag him back again and then hit the right arrow key, you see that my wall has moved to a new location. So you can change where those boundaries are just by changing that one number around. I'm gonna leave it at 200 because that looks pretty good. All right, now we're gonna do something very, very similar for the right arrow key. So let's not reinvent the wheel here. I'm gonna move my mouse cursor over the first if statement and I'm going to right click on this and say duplicate. There we go. Now I've got this loaded up in my cursor. We've got to make sure to put it in the wrong place, in the right place. So careful not to let it go. And we're going to put it right under the first if statement. And so it's going to be inside the forever and underneath the other if statements. You'll know it's right if this if statement lines up with this one and if this one lines up with that one. Okay, now let's go make some changes. We're going to say if I hit the left arrow key, and we're gonna t say our X position is greater than minus 200. So we've got to flip this around and change it to a greater than sign. So let's go greater than. If X position is greater than minus 200. So that's setting up our invisible wall on the left hand side. Now our movement is gonna be minus two because we're moving to the left. Okay, let's try that now. Um, so I'm going to move backwards and you can see as soon as I get too close to the edge of the wall It's just going to freeze me right here. Excellent. All right, and um, Okay, we're, let's do up and down and uh, then we'll take a little break guys for those of you. So let me give a little save here All right, so now let's do the up arrow um, Let's just start this one from scratch because it's a little bit different from the other ones so up and down movement are, um, are a little bit different here. Uh, we're gonna be changing our Y coordinate, of course. We're gonna be moving a little bit faster because the ground doesn't scroll up or down so we can move a bit faster. We're gonna move at a speed of seven here, but we only wanna be able to move up if we have enough fuel to actually put us up into the atmosphere, right? If we run out of fuel, we won't be able to keep pushing up. So we need an if statement here that basically says, if we have enough fuel, we can keep, we can move up. If not, then I'm afraid we're just gonna crash into the ground. So let's add another if statement here. We're gonna put it right below the first one. And we're gonna say, we're gonna put an and in there. So we're gonna go to our operators and select an and. And we'll go to our sensing blocks and grab another keyboard input. We'll say if our, we'll grab this one called key space. So if our up arrow key is pressed and our fuel is greater than zero if we have fuel. So let's go grab a greater than sign. Remember it's the arrow pointing to the right. So if our fuel, and we have a variable called fuel, it's already made for you guys. So let's just pop that in there and fuel is greater than zero. So if we have fuel and we press the arrow key, then we can move up, which is just change your Y coordinate. So change your Y by seven. There we go. And let's just duplicate that, duplicate. And we're gonna say down arrow here. We're gonna say minus seven. Um, now, not having the fuel here isn't really gonna make, yeah, let's just leave this this way. Uh, you don't necessarily need it for the down because it's not, um, you're allowed to go down even if you're out of fuel, but it doesn't matter. The uh, When you run out of fuel, the actual program will be forcing you to go down anyway. So that, so we don't have to change that at all. Okay, so now we're moving in all four directions if everything's been done correctly. Let's test out. You can see that the ground is moving much faster faster here when we go up and down and we move right it's much slower but you're gonna see when our ground gets moving that that's going to um, change quite a bit um, it'll look like we're moving much faster across the landscape because we're adding our movement to the movement of the background okay we're gonna be um, doing our background uh, as soon as we get back for the break I thought I'd check in with my audience let me give you a little save here all right and I will be right back guys all right, so I see that we're back in our uh, beautiful Chromework studio. 
Um, Balin, or sorry, Thane says his game is not working. So I see a whole bunch of hello, hello, hello here from me, Thane. You have to understand what I'm teaching. Uh, I'm not going to stop and help you with your projects, right? It's when I take little breaks like this that we can figure it out together. Um, so um, Thane and Balin, I know you guys both have Discord accounts. You can get, you can jump in and um, and meet me on Discord as, as well if you want. I don't know if these guys have access or not to the um, to the um, to the on stage area. So if anyone sees anyone who needs to be dragged in, just go ahead and do that. All right. So uh, Thane, we haven't done very much yet, um, but if you're lost at this point, I would say just reload my um, my working file, and I've given you guys a link for that already, and uh, that should uh, get you back up and running again. So usually when stuff doesn't work, it's just usually because you took one block and moved it to the wrong place. It might be something like the, an if statement in the wrong place. You've got stuff pretty complicated here already, one thing embedded in another, and if I took this, for example, and dragged it loose and put it underneath here, my program would totally stop working. So, um, now you could spend a lot of time, or I could spend time looking at your code, figuring out where you place something wrong, but that's not really the point of being here right now. You're trying to learn computing concepts. So don't sweat the fact that you can't get the blocks right now and reload my file and just make sure that you're following along and learning. So please don't freak guys if you uh, if your game doesn't work. Hey, Supreme Commander's here, hello. And Salima's here as well. Oh, Salima, I've already said hello to Salima. Um, okay. So uh, I want to show you guys a couple of remixes while we take a little break here. Uh, I told you that um, Thane and Balin have been working like crazy to get a whole bunch of, um, of files done here. Um, I think I have, oh, this is not what I was looking for. Okay, so here, um, here's one of Thane's files. Um, this is the game, uh, a remix of, um, let me get back to my screen here again. All right, I was just so impressed with all the work that Thane and Balin have been doing since they got started with us here. So I wanted to show you guys a little Pokemon-inspired remix of um, the Space Invaders file that he made a little while ago. Let me show this to you guys. It's actually very cute. Um, and you're kind of tossing little Pokeballs at a Pokemon. It's very cute. I don't know if there's anything else that I should be looking at in this file. Oh, and look, he turns black when he gets hit. That's cool. It's a nice little remix anyway. Good work. Uh, Thane is super interested in... Um, Thane, if you want to get in and talk and say hello to us on the um, on the Discord, by all means join, by the way. I'd like to... Um, I'd like to introduce you to the crowd since you're one of the newest people in our classroom. So if you can get into the on stage area on Discord, I'll put you on... Um, I'll put you on the broadcast and you can introduce yourself to everyone. So this is a really cool little project anyway, and I, I liked it a lot. Thane and Balin, as I said, have done a whole bunch of stuff. I can't show you everything that they've done, but um, you'll recognize, you'll see him in the remix rooms. You'll, so Thane, is, Thane's name on is uh, Retro Gamer the Tuber. And uh, I'm trying to remember what Balin's uh, name is. I didn't see any of your stuff in the remix room, Thalen, but, as soon, uh, Balin, but if you uh, do have anything there and you want to let me know where it is, I'm happy to show your work later as well. Um, and I also wanted to show you a project that uh, Thane had been working on um, that it, that's in the uh, student showcase. Uh, where is that? Right here. So um, Thane is really interested in computer art and he started working on this project. It's inside the student showcase and it's called Art Gallery. And so he's just uh, doing a whole bunch of, um, of drawings basically. So he drew all of these, um, these uh, Mario and, um, and Pokemon characters all inside the Scratch engine. And he's just building on this file, adding new ones all the time. Um, Thane also has a YouTube channel and uh, feel free to send us the um, address to, the, to that um, thing if you want um, anyone else to come over and check out your YouTube channel. So he just started off, but he started off with a drawing what? tutorial. So if you guys are interested, sorry, what was that, buddy? 
Um, anyway, um, so if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about drawing, Thane is teaching how to draw these characters on his YouTube channel, and I'm very excited by what he's doing here. So if you guys want to surf over to his channel, you can do that. Thane, please um, send me the name of your channel so that I can share it. I just don't remember it off the top of my head here. Um, Okay, uh, Chris Coltman says he made a remix of the cat and mouse game, my original coding game, and uh, surprise, surprise, Chris, I uh, have already got it up here on the screen because I was getting ready to show it to everyone. This is a game called Monkey and Bananas by Chris, who's from England, and uh, let me show that to you guys. It's really quite lovely. So you got to remember cat and mouse. It's the cat chasing after mice. Now we've got a monkey chasing after little walking bananas. <laughs> Num, num, num. Num, num, num. Is that your voice going num num num, Chris? So, num, num, num. Chris, Chris, I see you on Discord. Can you? Um, are you listening? I don't know. Yeah. Hello. Hi. So, Chris, did you record that voice yourself going num num num? Uh, no, it's a sound from Roblox. Oh, from Roblox. Okay, I didn't recognize it. I'm not a big Roblox player. This is a nice little mm -hmm. remix anyway. I like it a lot. So it's a simple game, but I can, but I really like the way that you added some extra touches to it. So you can see that it, the way that he made the uh, bananas walk was simply by um, drawing two animations for them like this and then making them switch between each other. So you have an evil banana as well. That's like um, a, a, the Enter the Rat variation on the game. How long did it take them to show up or... Um, num, I num, don't num. know. Um, it's, I think, a 1 in 20 chance. Oh, so num, it's just num, randomly num. happening, eh? Does it, any music play when he comes up or anything? How do num, I know num, which num. one? Oh, how do I tell them? Um, they have red mouths and they're bigger. Oh, yeah, a little bit bigger. I think it... I get it. It just would have been a little bit easier to see if there had been some other distinction. Like, now when I, when I view it in full num, screen, num, I can... I can tell, but when I view it on the little screen, it's really hard to see what's going on here. But uh, yeah. I really like this game, Chris. It's uh, it's nice work. I'm glad you, uh, you made it for me. So if anyone else has anything they'd like to share today, just leave me a link inside the YouTube chat or inside Discord. I'm actually I'm on the um, Ask Mr. T thread right now in the text chat on Discord. So if anyone has anything they'd like to show off during the next break, um, then I will do that. I'm going to get back to coding here again for a few minutes. Um, anyway, but uh, thanks a lot for that, Chris and Thane. Balin, especially, if you have a project you want to show, send me a link, put it in the YouTube chat, and I will get it online here during our next break. Okay, let's get back to it. Um, so, just going to start off with a little intro. All right, we're back here in Chromeworks Studios again, and we're ready to start off with the uh, next section. So we've been building our spaceship, and we've got it moving around, but it doesn't look very realistic because there's no ground for it to move over. So let's get it uh, moving um, right away here. And um, so we'll start working on the ground sprites, and uh, then the game should start looking a little more realistic. I'm going to warn you again, guys, this is a long session. Normally I break these into two or three parts, but we're going to blast through this all in one piece. So be patient with me, guys. And if you don't have time, we're going to be taping this and uh, running it over again. Okay, so I'm switching. Uh, let's go back to our screen. All right, so I'm going to go over to our ground sprite. And we're going to start coding it now. Um, so again, as I showed you before, we've got a whole bunch of different uh, pieces, and they all connect to each other. So you'll see at the, on the right-hand side of this, we've got it coming down a little bit. And if you look over on the left, it kind of meets up with it right here and uh, overlaps a little bit. I've actually set these up very, very carefully so that you can design your own thing. You can um, just modify these to make your own background any way you want to. Like you can just go in and start painting in here if you want to and make changes to your background. I'm gonna undo that. But you can do basically anything you want here. The one thing I'm gonna warn you about though is when if this um, screen ends right here at this height, you're gonna have to have the other one start at exactly the same height or the, the pieces aren't gonna fit together properly. It's a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle, right? So just be careful about that if you're designing your own screens. At some point, I'm gonna show everyone how to do all of this in Photoshop or Pixlr. I'll probably put out a little bonus video showing that at some point, but um, 
but this is good for now. Uh, okay, when green flag clicked. Uh, all right, let's start scrolling here. So we're gonna have to initialize a few variables. Now we've got a variable here called counter. Um, set counter to zero. And I've got a sprite here called background tile. I don't think I'm using it anymore. I'm just going to not enter it right now because I don't think that I use it in this version of the game. I was using it in an earlier version. I forgot to remove it. Okay, so um, let's uh, switch our costume to the first costume, which is just called background. So we're going to go to our looks menu. We're going to go switch costume to background, the original one with no numbers after it. And then we're gonna tell the background to go to the middle of the screen. You can see that these backgrounds are all just a tile that you can move around the screen. So we wanna make sure that it starts off in the middle and then we're gonna start pushing it over to the left to, um, to make the screen appear to scroll, right? So let's go grab a go to block. We're gonna say go to zero, zero. All right, we also want to move it to the back because we want to make sure all the other stuff on the screen is in front of it. So we'll go to our looks menu. We'll grab a send to back or go to, not front, but back. Okay, that will send it to the back layer. Now, in order for this to work, um, so we've got um, our tile here, our ground tile, which is exactly the same size as our screen. I'm gonna use some pieces of paper here to demo this for you guys so that you understand it. So I've got um, a screen here like this. Well, let me put this in front of the camera. And now I've got a second, and I've got this tile in front of it with the ground sprites on it. As I start moving the tile across like this, you're gonna see that there's gonna be blank areas here. Now I can see the background, right? And I don't want to. So I have to, I'm gonna to have to create a second tile that overlaps over the first one so that no matter what happens, our two blocks, uh, there's always gonna be the entire screen covered up. It's gonna be covered up half by one of these sprites and half by another one. We're gonna take the first one and offset it from the first one, from the second one, so that they're both coming on the screen simultaneously. And if we, and so when the first one gets to the left of the screen, we can remove it and another block will be there to take its place so that we'll never know that the screen is empty. Otherwise, I'm gonna show this to you as we build it and it'll make more sense as we go along here. Okay, so this, the point though is that we have two blocks here from the background, one for the, uh, so one is the ground and the other one's gonna be a clone or a copy of the ground that's gonna be offset for the first one. So let's go ahead and make our clone here. We're gonna go control, create a clone of myself right there. And then we'll grab a forever loop and here's where we're gonna start things moving. So we're gonna set our X coordinate. So we're gonna change, we're not changing our X, we're actually setting it to a certain number and that number is gonna be based on how far the screen is scrolled over using that variable called scroll X. So let's go grab a set X variable, set X to now, um, we're gonna to have to build something complicated here. The three or four blocks gonna go into here. So we're just gonna build this underneath for now. Let's go grab that mod button. Let's put that together. Um, oh, actually, I'm, I'm uh, yeah. So let, let me show you one thing and then, I'll, well, then we're gonna make a modification. I think this will make more sense if I teach it to you this way first. So we're gonna grab a couple of things. We're gonna grab a minus sign. We're gonna grab the mod command. And we're gonna grab the scroll X variable. So under variables, I'm gonna grab this little guy here that says scroll X. So, um, okay. So here we go. Um, now, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell it to, to uh, so we're at zero, which is the middle right now, and we're gonna subtract the amount that the screen has scrolled over. So let's start off by putting in here where it goes zero minus scroll X. So when I click the green flag, you can see that we've already got the ground moving here. Now we've got a clone of ourselves here. Let's get rid of that clone just for a second, just so that I can show you guys what this looks like. So that scroll X variable, let me show it to you, is going up, 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 up until it gets to 480, which is the edge of the screen. 
and then it's not able to go further. Scratch can't handle anything that goes off the edge of the screen like this. So it just freezes here, but that number keeps going higher. What we need to do is take this number when it gets down to zero, when it gets up to 480, and turn it back to zero again. And that's where the mod comes in. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to um, grab this scroll X. Let me stop the file here. I'm going to save this right now in case anyone's having trouble keeping up. All right, I'm going to grab this scroll X. And I'm going to put it before the mod. And then I'm going to put the mod uh, block inside the minus sign here. So now it looks like zero minus scroll X mod by a certain number. And so that mod number is the maximum number that we want that scroll X variable to go to before it goes back down to one again. So let's show, let me show you 480. So now when we start our guy going, he'll move across the screen. And then as soon as he gets to the edge, he'll reappear back in the middle again. Watch. There we go. And he's just going to keep doing that infinitely. The scroll X number is continuing to go up, but we're dividing it so that no matter what happens, it's always going to be uh, divided by 480, basically. So the, as that number goes up, um, the background is going to know to go back to the middle again, but are in the world where we now know that we're 1800 pixels over this world right now, which means we we're now on our fourth or fifth different screen, right? So we're keeping track of two things, how far we've gone in the world and how far we've gone on the screen. It's a little bit complicated, but I'm hoping it's making a bit more sense now. All right. Uh, now we have a second variable here called counter that I told you about. Let's go change that counter by one change counter by one so you can see now as i play the game let me show you the counter the counter is just is mapping out to the exact same number of scroll x except it is uh the number that's being modified by this mod thing oh oh no no so this Okay, our, sorry, our counter is, is continuing to go up. So as our X coordinate changes back to um, to zero again, what? Hold it. So our scroll X. All right, let's keep working on this. This is going to make sense in a second. I said, as I said, this is quite complicated stuff. So we just need to keep building it, and it'll make it'll make a bit more sense as we're making it. So we're changing our counter by one. The counter is keeping track of where we are on the screen, basically. So we're going to keep uh, we're going to make sh sure that when this number gets to a certain point, um, which is basically to the edge of the screen, uh, which is about 240 pixels over, what we're going to want to ha happen is we're going to want that. Um, so let me show you on the screen here, guys. So we start off in the middle. Oh, I can't uh, switch it while it's maximized like this. So we're starting off in the middle. We go over 240 pixels, which takes us to, um, which takes us to here. And, uh, or no, which takes us all the way over to here when it's over to positive 240. And while it's invisible here, it's gonna change to its next costume so that when it comes back, it will be the second tile in our little movement cycle here. Um, let's keep building it, it'll make sense. So we're gonna take that counter, we're gonna change it with an if statement. So I'm gonna go if, if counter equals 240, let's grab an equal sign, and we'll put a counter variable in there. If counter equals 240, which means we're off the edge of the screen, we're gonna switch costume now let's go to our looks switch costume to um now we want to put a variable in here i created a variable called. oh and we also have to start well, well we won't do the clone yet switch costume to i've created a variable here called next costume don't get that confused with next costume the command which actually just switches it to next costume this next costume variable is going to be what number is the costume that we're on right now so right now we're on costume one and we change this variable to two, it's gonna tell it to put on costume two, which is gonna take us to the next spot on this background, then costume three, costume four, and that's how it's gonna change from one view to another. So we're switching our costume to next costume, and then because we've already gone off the screen, we can set that counter back to zero again, so it can restart the counting. So set counter back to zero. So now we've got, 
Now this is working the way I expected it to. So we've got the scroll X that's constantly keeping track of our movement across the screen, or across the giant screen of thousands of pixels. We've got the counter that's just keeping track of where our objects are on the screen. And it just goes up to 240, which is enough to take it off the screen, and then it changes costume. So um, you might be able to see here that every time that it flashes back on the screen, it should be a slightly different costume. Let's confirm that that's happening. It goes up at the end there. No, this is still the same costume. I eh? switch costume to... Oh, we haven't changed that. One more thing we have to do before this is working. So let's go change next costume by one. So right now, um, it's it's always going back to the first costume, but as soon as we change this number, it'll go back to the second costume. Okay, let's try that again. So as soon as we get off the edge of the screen, you'll see that the next one that comes up on the screen is going to be a different map. Let's try that again. Oh, it's still not working. Oh, here we go. Now it's working. Okay, beautiful. All right, so we've got a different map here. Now we need to do the same thing over in the clone and then our ground will basically be working. So this part here that's blank on the screen is gonna be filled up by the second one in this. So as you can see, the um, more and more of the screen becomes empty, but that second part's gonna be coming over. When this one leaves the screen, this one's gonna be at a point where it completely fills the screen. And during that second, when everything's hidden, that's when we're gonna go presto change you and change your costume. Believe it or not, this is all going to work in a second, and it will actually look like we're scrolling over an endless landscape. So um, let's go ahead and put the clone back in. Let me save my file for those of you who are having trouble. I'm going to finish this clone movement, and then we'll take another break. All right, so the create clone of myself is right above the forever. And now you can see that the first background is moving, but the second one, we got to get it moving now so that it matches the movement of the first one, but just to offset a little bit, right? So they both look like they're part of the same thing. Okay, so let's go and grab a, when I start as a clone. Let me just cross this out so I don't code it twice. All right, so let's go to our control blocks and I'm gonna go when I start as a clone. We're gonna send this guy to the back layer too. It doesn't really matter which of them is at the back, so we can send both of them to the back and, and whichever one ends up being at the back at any moment will uh, will be fine. All right, now let's grab a forever. Control, forever. I've lost my forever, there it is. And now we're gonna tell this guy to switch to the same costume number as the first guy. So let's go to our looks menu. We'll go switch costume to and put that variable next costume in there, next costume. Switch costume to next costume. And then we're gonna tell it to start, start scrolling. We're gonna use the same block that we did for the other one. So I'm actually gonna go over, well, actually that's gonna cradle. Oh no, all right. I wanna grab this set XY block here and um, and make a copy of it and move it over here. The problem is it's connected to everything <laughs> below it. So when I make a duplicate, it's gonna be a little bit of wasted effort, but let me show you how to quickly do this. I'm just gonna right click, duplicate, put it down here. Then I'm gonna take everything else down below it and I'm gonna trash it. I just want this set of blocks here and I'm gonna put that right below here. Now, the only thing we have to change here is we don't want this guy starting at zero. We want him starting at 480, way off on the edge so that when he moves, he'll be offset from the first guy. So let's change this number to 480. And I'm pretty sure this is all we have to do to get our background moving. So let's go grab the green flag and test it out. So a little anomaly here at the beginning, but the ground should continue changing here as we're going. Let's see how this works. Going over our landscape, it's flat. And it, yeah, here it is, it turns hilly and then comes down and another hill and you can see it's quite an elaborate landscape so this is something i know you guys have been wanting to do for a long time is games where you can design your own big complex maps this kind of uh, code will will work in um, scrolling platformers and stuff like that as well and in scrolling um uh, running games, anything where you're moving constantly across the screen and you have a, a screen that's bigger than the real world. It's a little bit tricky to do. Something's a little off here. 
Isn't that weird? It looks like it's, mo oh, you know what? That's the end. I think we just got off our last screen there and we started off at the beginning. I don't think my screen wraps around completely. Um, so when you get to the end of it, you get that weird seam. I could fix that though, definitely. And if you've designed this properly, it should basically look like one endless uh, landscape that keeps going and going and going. All right, so I'm gonna take a little break and uh, make sure everything's cool with my live audience. And I'll be right back. All right, we're back in the beautiful Chromework studio. Um, Balin's saying he's in Discord. Well, I saw him on Discord and now he's gone again. Um, okay, well, if you wanna pop in and say hello, Balin, then go ahead and the same for Thane as well. Um, anyone else working on anything or any have anything interesting they want to tell us about? Oh, Gamer Dave is here. Hey, Dave, Gamer Davey, how are you? Um, so if anyone on Discord wants to chime in and, um, and tell anything, if anyone wants to show any kind of a project that they're working on, then just go ahead and do that. Uh, Salima says that she has to leave in a little bit, or she did, and then she got rid of the, um, of the text. So, um, Salima, as I said before, I, um, yeah, I know you guys all have lives, so what's going to happen is I'm just going to post this all to YouTube afterwards and you can just pick up where you left off so you don't have to worry about missing anything. Um, it might even be easier to do this stuff when you can pause from time to time, right? All right. Uh, yeah, Balin says, I just got in. Me, me meaning what? Do you have something to show us? Balin, do you have a link you want to share with us? If you have a... Um, a game project or something you want to show off, I'm happy to show it to you guys. Um, in the meantime, though, if anyone has anything else, so anything, anything, anything. Nope. Okay. So let's get back to the coding, guys. What time is it? It's 11 o'clock. So I'm warning you one more time. This is a long, long project. We're going to be here at hello. least. Oh, hello there. Who is that? Sorry. Somebody said hello and... Uh, Oh, that was Gamer Davey, I guess. He's a minute behind us. Oh, I see what's happening. So you guys are, are hearing me say hello and you're saying hello back, um, but only after you hear the thing on YouTube, which is a minute behind us. Okay. It's it's a little bit difficult trying to work in two different time zones, eh, hey guys? All right, let's get back to the coding here, everybody. Um, all right, so we're going to keep working on the ground here as well. Oh... Uh, Okay, yeah, so we're gonna start populating the ground now and putting all the different objects on the ground that we can start hitting and we're, we'll work on that in a second. So let's get back to it. All right, we're back everybody. Actually, I th I've, I'm doing this the wrong way, aren't I? I think I always uh, start off uh, in here. Let's just do that transition one more time. I did it wrong. All right, we're back, everybody. We're st uh, ready to continue working on the ground now. What we're going to do is we're going to add the different ground objects that we can hit with our ship. We've got three different ground objects, as I showed you before, so let's get to that now. So we're still um, working on the ground texture here. Um, let's um, go and add a new green flag here. So this is the, uh, a different branch of the program that's gonna take care of randomly picking what's gonna appear on the screen. I uh, initially set this up so that all three of the different ground objects all had their own random number picking when they were on the screen. But the problem with that is they were overlapping each other. So you can't have two, two of the same thing occupying the same space. And when you do, use truly random numbers, that's what ends up happening. Um, so um, what I'm doing is having each, I'm rolling one random number basically, and uh, and then um, that it's gonna interpret that number like rolling a dice basically. So we're gonna roll like a 10 sided dice here. If it's from one to five, we're gonna create an enemy missile. We want lots of missiles on the screen. If we roll a, th uh, a three, uh, it's we're going to get a create a domed city or yeah uh, and if we roll a one or two I guess there should be one two or three for picking a fuel tank and then four for picking a dome basically so no matter what happens in that number we'll always be spawning something now to, to add a little bit more randomness we don't want everything 
evenly spaced, so we're gonna start placing stuff based on a time delay that's random as well. So let me show you that. Let's go into our green flag. Let's put a forever here, because we're gonna keep populating this map forever. And the first thing we're gonna do is wait. So we're gonna wait inside the forever here. We're gonna wait a random amount of time. So let's go grab a pick random. Now you can play around with these numbers a little bit. The numbers I'm using are 0 0.5, to 1.5, which means the shortest time you're going to wait for something to appear on the right hand side of the screen is going to be 0 0.5 seconds, and the longest time is one and a half seconds. And so, um, the, the everything that spawned is going to be anywhere between that. So, they'll always be half a second apart, which will mean that there are at least a couple of pixels off to the side and they won't be totally overlapping each other, basically. All right, so let's go set, um, a, let's go pick a random number. I created a variable here called a random pick. You can see it here in my variables command. And that is basically, we're gonna roll a 10 sided dice and, and random pick is gonna be the answer. So let's go set random pick to a random number from one to 10. So we're gonna go pick random from one to 10. Let me save my file here again. All right, um, so uh, we're gonna pick a number, put it into that variable random pick, and then depending on what that number is, we're gonna do, we're gonna spawn different objects. So let's go um, if random pick is greater than a number. So let's go greater than, and we're gonna grab random pick under our variables. If random pick I'm going to grab a few more random picks here because we're going to need three of them. We're going to need a less than sign. Let's just get all the bits and pieces we need here. Let's grab a less than sign and an equal to sign. And then we need uh, two more if statements. So let's just grab, the, um, all right, let's just work from here. So if pick random is greater than five, so if you roll a six, seven, eight, nine, or a 10, we're gonna get a missile. So we're gonna go create a clone here, create clone of enemy missile. All right, now we'll put another if statement down below that. And here's the one where we need the less than sign. So if it's less than four, so we roll a one to three, if random pick is less than four, then we're gonna create a different clone. We're gonna create a clone of the fuel tank, which is the second most common object. And then the last object, which only appears one out of every 10 times is a city. And the cities are worth way more points than everything else, so they're high value targets, but they don't appear very often. They don't, uh, the, the missiles can hurt you, the fuel tanks can help you, and the cities are just there for points basically, right? So uh, let's go ahead and say if, random pick is equal to four. Then we're gonna create a clone of dome, which is the cities, right? Create a clone of dome. All right, so when we click the green flag, nothing's gonna happen here because our guys are all invisible. We've got a fuel tank here that's invisible. Let me show it to you. It's right off, it's positioned off the right hand side of the screen, which is where everything's gonna be spawned. And we've got a missile here and we've got a dome city here. They're all off on the right hand side of the screen, which is where we want them because stuff is gonna be appearing at the right hand side of the screen and then moving across, right? Um, so uh, we should, we're gonna be working on these guys one by one to actually get them on the screen and get them scrolling. Um, I don't think there's anything else we have to do on the ground. Actually, I think we might be entirely done the ground now. Yes, we are. Okay, so that's all we have to do inside the ground. So let's start working on the individual things that are gonna go across the ground now. Um, I'm just gonna keep blasting through here. We'll take a break after we finish our first block here. So let's go over and start the first of these guys, which is the, uh, enemy missiles, I think. Yeah, let's start with an enemy missile. They're kind of cool. Or hold it. I'm just wondering which one's more logical because they're all gonna have pieces of each other. So we've got the fuel depot, the dome, and the enemy missile that are all gonna be kind of similar to each other. 
maybe we should start with the simplest one which doesn't do anything and then we'll make variations on it from there okay so i changed my mind we're gonna go to the dome and we'll start with the dome cities okay so um so we're on the dome city now let's go grab a green flag let's magnify that a little bit for you guys All right, when the green flag's clicked, we wanna make sure that we've switched our costume back to a city. So I told you there was two ways we were gonna doing explosions here. The first way is we're actually gonna change the costume around. So I took, I, I grabbed this clip art city here. You can see it a little closer up here. And I just added, I just basically made duplicates of it and then added some explosion graphics to it. It doesn't look like much here. And then I started using my eraser to make it disappear and then eventually brought it down to nothing. So it doesn't look, it looks a little weird here, but once it's shrunk, and once you run through the animation, you'll see it looks really quite cool. Let me drag the, um, or let me tell this guy to get to the middle of the screen here so that I can show you guys the animation a little more closely. Okay, so he's in the middle of the screen now. Um, so I'm gonna have him just run through his animations here just so you can quickly see um, what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna go repeat. I forget how many costumes there are here, just eight costumes. So we need to repeat seven times. We're gonna be using this code later, so we can probably recycle this. I'm gonna go switch costume to my original costume, city, and then I'm just gonna go next costume seven times. And so every time I click the green flag, you'll see the thing will explode basically. So let, um, let's maximize it here and you can have a look at what that looks like. So it happens really, really quickly. But uh, when it happens in the, in the game, you'll see that it, um, it looks quite a bit like a bomb has hit the city and exploded. Now, since it's the whole city, you could do like a little nuclear mushroom cloud or something like that too. That would look cool as well. And uh, now that I think about it in hindsight, I realize maybe that's what I should have done. All right, so we don't need this uh, right now. Let's, let's just grab this repeat and drag it off to the side here. Um, Balin, I'm going to um, be online in a second. Can you just mute your mic for now, and um, and I will talk to you right now. You can't have your microphone on when you're online, buddy. When you're uh, until the, it's your turn to talk. Thank you. All right. So we're going to switch costume to city. Make sure that we're not an explosion graphic, and then we're going to hide this guy because he's just a reference one. We're going to use him to make our other cities. He's just going to be sitting there at the right hand side of the screen making other cities for me, basically, right? So let's go control forever here, and we're going to tell this guy to follow the map. And to do that, we just have to tell it to change its x coordinate. So let's go set x. Two, and we're gonna use that scroll X command here. So we're gonna do a plus, uh, grab our plus sign, which is right at the top here and pop it in there. I'm gonna go 240 plus scroll X, our variable scroll X. Let me save my file here in case anyone's behind. Yeah, like a bunch of guys are asking for that. There you go. So 240 plus scroll X, what does that mean? It means that um, we're going to set our X to the far right hand side of the screen, which is 240. And then it's always going to keep updating it. Every time we set the X, it's going to change it to X plus whatever number we are off to the side here. So scroll X as it goes up, it'll move our force or guide to move over to the left, to, towards the left hand side of the screen. So right now it's 240. But as scroll X goes up, right now our scroll X is 100-ish, for example. So now it's going to tell it to go to 240 plus scroll X, which is, oh, that's moving to the left. Okay, I'm going to trust that my math is correct here. Let's, um, so should it not be minus scroll X? Let's have a look at this. So I'm not spawning a guy right now, and that's the problem. So let's go and, oh yeah. So this is just uh, forever set X to, I'm just trying to figure out what I did here because I did this last week and I'm, it's not making sense to me anymore. Okay, we're gonna set our X, but that's not the clone. Okay, so we're just telling our, our guy where he's situated in the world right now. The scroll X is the number, is that the number that just keeps going on up forever and ever, right? So when it gets to 480, no, this goes back down to zero again, right? 
No, the, so the scroll X number keeps going. That's showing us our, our coordinates inside this big world that we've created, right? So we want um, our guy to start off on the right-hand side of our world, and then we just want to pin him to that spot on the world and keep him there as the world scrolls across. That's what we're doing here, okay? So this isn't controlling his movement, um, except controlling it across this big scrolling landscape that we're doing. So now to get him moving, we're actually have to get the clone doing his movement. So let's go uh, when I start as a clone. So let's go to our control blocks. When I start as a clone, let's go show. Tell him to go to the front. We're going to send all our guys to the front just to make sure um that the landscape and other stuff doesn't end up going in front of them by accident okay um now we're keeping track of um where the building's x coordinate is using a variable i've created a um a variable here be careful if you're creating this one from a variable like this from scratch this is a um local variable meaning for this sprite only that i've created it so if you go ahead and create a sprite like the, uh like this one that you want scrolling across the screen it does have to be for this sprite only and the reason for that is um we can use that same variable to keep tr building x to control how far across the left our screen is with um with this building and with every other building we do on the screen each one will have its own building x variable instead of each clone will have its own variable instead of having one that controls how everything moves right so if you've got multiple guys that you're trying to position you have to have that local variable to keep track of it all right so let's go set building x to 240 which means drag the building right over to the right hand side of the screen now we're going to do something here um so because our ground is at different heights depending on where we are uh, we're going to have to do something a little bit complicated here where we have to tell our our object um where is the ground we're going to have to have it poke around and figure out where the ground is so when i put it down in the middle of the screen it's going to have to go up or down and try and figure out where the edge of the ground is we want our cities let me show you the background here we want our city appearing right along the edge of the top of the background here which means we're going to have to put it down somewhere. Let me show my city again. Uh, let's get it back to the middle. It's hard to grab stuff. Oh, or is it invisible? There it is. Okay. So I want my city to appear here rather than here. And what we're going to do is using some pretty weird code that I'm going to show you in a second. What we're going to do is have the thing start at a certain position. I think we started at the bottom, and then I'm going to have it rise up and keep checking. Am I touching the ground? Yes. Okay, keep going up. Am I still touching the ground? Yep. Keep going up. Am I still touching the ground? Keep going up. Yep. And it's going to keep doing that until it says, oh, I'm not touching the ground anymore. Then it's going to come down a little bit, and then that'll be its final resting position. So that's how we're going to place these guys so that they're walking on the land. Now to do that though, we have to do some weird stuff. When I initially started coding this, as soon as I put the city down, it did like that. And so every time you get a city, it appears to be rising. We actually want all this probing, this checking to see if you're touching the ground to all happen at once. Scratch is no good at that, boys and girls. Scratch does not know how to do this very well. So we have to hack it. And you're gonna really uh, be surprised at how we do this, guys, because we actually have to do something over and over and over again in a way that you shouldn't ever have to do in coding. And I blame the guys over at MIT for, uh, for not setting this up properly in Scratch. But the real problem is um, that it's impossible to, to get a whole bunch of stuff happening simultaneously inside a loop. We, normally what we would do is just keep, keep having it check the ground inside of a forever loop and then as soon as it was touching the ground, exit that loop. But if you do that, it's going to start floating. We can't have it check, 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 check all at once. And so to do that, we have to do something a little bit different. Okay, so where were we? We set building X to 240. Now we're going to set that object height. It's a different command here. Let me just go into my blocks here. I'm going to make a brand new kind of block here that's called set object height and that's what we're going to be doing this probing stuff that i'm talking about so i've created a brand new block for you guys i have this define block here that will let me tell it how it's going to work and the actual block that gets invoked is this one here set object height 
Let's plunk that in here. So as soon as the code gets down to that level, it's gonna go over here, do all of this, and then go back and rejoin the other code again. So what's gonna happen inside the object height here? Well, let's start our city off at the bottom of the screen. We're gonna tell it, go to the bottom of the screen. So set your Y motion, set Y to minus 180. And uh, I'm gonna grab a whole bunch of if statements here. So let's just, uh, let's build the first one and then we're just gonna start duplicating it. So let's go to our control blocks. We'll grab an if statement. And I'm gonna go if I'm touching the ground. So sensing, touching, ground. So we started him at the bottom. If he's touching the ground, which he is, we're gonna tell him move up a little bit. So we're gonna go change Y by 10. Simple, right? change y by 10. Now here's the weird part, right? So if I put this inside a loop here, don't do this guys, I just wanna show you, but if I do this inside a loop here, watch what happens to my city. Oh, I'm hiding it of course, so we can't actually see it. Uh, let's have our cities show up a little bit more often. I, I um, Actually, I think if we wait here long enough, a city will suddenly appear. So when a city does appear, you're gonna see it's gonna to start to float up on the screen. It's only a one in 10 chance, so it might take a second. No, it's not appearing, eh? All right, maybe, you know, I don't wanna mess with the, um, with the, um, well, actually I should, I should make these happen more often so that, um, so that um, we can see these things. I am going to change this around here right now. I'm gonna make the cities the most common one. I'm just gonna change this enemy missile. Mm -hmm. What's up? Um, my brother, um, brother's screen isn't working. His game's not working. Oh, his game's not work. No, his game is working. It's his screen for the Discord isn't working. Oh, okay. Well, um, I, I can't help you with those tech problems while I'm teaching, um, Thane. I'll I'll talk to you about it in a minute, okay? Uh, we need. Uh, I won't be able to follow. Okay, so. I've saved the file right now. Can you guys just share the same screen for a bit? You're in the same room together, right? Can you guys yeah, just... We... Yeah, but our computers are on opposite, um... Oh, okay. All right, um... All right, let me... So, what exactly is your problem, Thane? I'm still not understanding, so... Alan's come... Is it working? Sorry, it's, you're cutting in and out, Thane? So, uh, they, uh, so your Discord isn't working properly, right? Um, I would suggest, so I can't help you with these kind of tech support things while stuff is happening, right? Um, the stream is still running, everyone else uh, is able to see it. I can't go over there and figure out what's wrong with your computer, right? So we're gonna have to just, um, uh, you can restart the software, rejoin the stream, whatever it is that you're doing there. Sorry, what are you saying, Thane? You got some real microphone problems, dude. Like every time you talk to me, it's like comes in and out and in and out. I think there's something going on with your microphone setting that's a bit messed up. So if you're having trouble, the other thing is just follow along on YouTube. You don't get to talk in the classroom, but it, uh, but everything's very smooth there and you shouldn't have um, any kind of problems. So um, really, I, guys, I can't be stopping my lesson to do tech support like this. So just so you know. All right, so what I did here, um, what I did here was I just changed um, what shows up when I roll a one to five to make it a dome city appear instead. I'm gonna change this back again later. We're not gonna leave this this way forever, but I just want it to appear a little more often just so I can test my code here. So there it is. You can see my cities are appearing now. So it's probing now, it's checking to see, but, uh, but it just keeps going, right? And so this is what would happen under the normal mechanism. It would just keep looking here until it found the ground. But every time I created a new city, it would appear off the bottom and then go dink into position. That's not what we, what we wanted. We wanted to do all that probing invisibly, and then we wanted to put itself into its position. So the way that we're gonna do that, and this is a bit of a hack, and um, this is not um, something I've ever seen anyone else do. Jeffrey gave me this, um, little step here is uh, this whole if touching ground, hold it, where are we? Set object height. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this forever here. All we want in here is change Y by 10. 
So we needed to do this over and over again. What Every time I duplicate this if statement, I've made a second one now. Now it's gonna do it twice. Because it's not in a loop, it's actually gonna evaluate both these things simultaneously. Everything that's in an if statement here all gets, gets figured out simultaneously. So now it's gonna check twice to see if it's touching the ground. I need to do it a bunch more times. So let's go and duplicate again and add a bunch more. I'm gonna say add at least 10 of these. Um, Sorry, Thane, did you have something else to add? Um, Sean says he's not going to do a live class, so he's just going to do the after. All right, whatever works for you, dude. Sorry. All right. Well, all right, so as you can see, all I've done is just done the same thing over and over again. You can't do this too much. If you put 20 of them in or whatever, it's no big deal. You just need enough of them so that it's going to go 10 pixels at a time. It needs to keep checking over and over again until basically you get as high up on the screen as you can. This might be the highest spot on the screen, and that's probably, oh, maybe, so our screen is 360 pixels high, which means... It's probably about 250 to 300 pixels high, which means we would have to, if we wanted the city to sit on top of this, we would have to have it check probably 20 times at least, or maybe 30 times before it figured it out. So you can't put too many of these if statements in here. It doesn't really matter, and it's not going to slow your program down here. So I've got probably about 30 of these in here. As I said, this is not the way I want to code this. It's just because Scratch has no way to simultaneously have all these things happen other than have them all be in an if statement. But now you can see it's actually going to work properly. So the guys, instead of rising up, they're just going to appear, and they're going to be at the, and they're going to appear at the top. There we go. So wherever it is they appear, they're going to appear at the top. Now we just have to get them scrolling across the screen, and then they'll be stuck to that spot, and they'll actually appear as though they're sitting on the screen. So let's go back to our main code again. When I started the clone. So after we finished setting our object height, going down that rabbit hole, we're going to go repeat until. We're going to tell it to start moving to the left and keep doing it until it gets off the left edge of the screen, which is an X of minus 240. So let's go. Mr. T. Yes, Chris? Um, I think I know um, a way that you can do it without doing all of them. Really? I mean, you put. Yeah, you put a repeat until and not touching ground. Repeat until not touching ground. I'd like to try that one right now, Chris. That's an interesting idea. So uh, if touching ground, I, I no, I think as soon as you put it into a loop. So repeat until touching ground and then change Y by 10, right? Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah. All right, let's test that out. I, I don't think it's going to work though, but let's have a look at our city and see if our city floats or whether it just pops up in the right location. This will tell us. I don't see any cities at all yet. Uh, repeating. Why did my cities disappear? Are they invisible? Oh, there they are. Um, when I started... Oh, set object height. So where's my city clones gone? When I started the clone, waiting for the first one to pop up here. Huh. All right, I'll have to play around with that a little bit later. It's an intriguing idea. I'm just gonna replace. Repeat until touching ground. Or until not touching ground is what. Ah, good point. Excellent. Who was that? Hey, Thane. Oh, thank you. Uh, all right, so let's try not touching ground and see if that does it. Repeat until not touching ground. All right, and you can see they're doing the floaty thing again, right? Can you guys see that on the screen there? All right, so again, so Chris, that was a really excellent suggestion, but it didn't work. And again, we're dealing with this problem with Scratch. And so the only way to, to fix this is by having a whole bunch of if statements that aren't inside a loop. So this is a limitation of Scratch. And when you get into more serious coding, uh, you're not going to have this problem. Um, but this is just a workaround that Jeffrey figured out when um, when we realized that we, that we needed to do stuff simultaneously and Scratch just doesn't support it. Okay, so we're probing properly. That's all working perfectly. So let's grab, grab a repeat until. We're going to tell it repeat until we're over on the left-hand side of the screen, which is X position is equal to minus 240. So we'll go equals to, 
We need our X position, which is under motion. Set X. S uh, sorry, X position, which is this one here. X position is equal to minus 240. I haven't saved in a while. Let me do that for you guys. All right, so keep repeating until we hit the left-hand side of the screen. And what are we going to do? We're just going to tell our building to go to the spot on the map where it is minus where it started. Basically, we're going to start where we started, which is building X. And we're going to tell it to subtract the amount that um, that our scroll X variable has changed. The, the real effect of that is going to be it's going to start our thing moving across the screen. So let's go grab a minus sign here. So I've got set X to minus sign and we're going to go building x so let's grab our variables building x minus scroll x so this stuff you guys are a little young to be doing this kind of coding guys right this is some fairly sophisticated stuff but just remember this recipe that we're using here these variables this can be adapted to any game you want so you can really take this code change the graphics around change a few of the um, of the other uh, sound effects and stuff around and have a totally different game, a jumping game or a platformer game or whatever, just using this whole same scroll X idea. So um, um, just even if it's not making complete sense, just understand that this is a part of the code that makes the object move across the screen when it starts. So um, let me actually start it off here. Let's click the green flag and see what happens here and see if our cities do in fact end up going across. Now this um, method I have for touching the land, oh, what? Okay, that's not right. Building X minus scroll X. All right, that is not coming up properly. Is it because I started my guy off on the side of the screen? He's not in the middle. So hold it, let's stop this. Where is my reference guy? He's still over there on the left-hand side of the screen. So he was spawning over on the right, and now he's not all of a sudden. It's that building X variable. That's the only thing that's changed, right? It's my building X. I probably didn't initialize that building X variable. So where do I initialize that building X variable? Set building X to 240. I did not do that, eh? Oh yeah, here it is. Building X is 240. So, what is going on here? This guy should be moving properly. I'm going to take a little break here and talk to my audience, and I'll be right back. Okay, Thane and Balin. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys first uh, uh, before we go any further about this. So we've got kind of a routine here. Most of the people who have been here for a few weeks or so understand the way that this works is I, I want you guys to talk to me during this lesson, help me out with ideas and stuff like that. Um, but there's times to talk and there's times to not talk. So for those of you who are new here, let me explain the rule one more time, okay? So if you're having a problem with something that's not working for you, I don't stop the whole lesson to fix that, especially stuff that's like, oh, my Discord's not working, or I can't see this, or the sound's not working on my computer. None of that. This is like a TV show, right? If you're, if you, um, if you switch to something on a on a TV set and you started it late, you can't talk to the audience and tell them to restart it again. Talk to the uh, to the TV show and tell it to restart it again. We're kind of on autopilot here while I'm airing stuff. The exception to that, the time when I want you to interrupt me, is when I've made a mistake, when I've done something that's wrong on the screen, I can't figure out if you have the answer, then you can chime in. And that's a way to earn a Save My Bacon badge, right? By uh, by, by fi helping me fix something that I've broken. Often when I'm working on this stuff, it gets a little bit complicated and I have a little, b and I've lost sight of something or forgotten to do something. And you guys are looking at it with a fresh pair of eyes. You might see a mistake. So by all means, jump in and do that. Um, so jump in during the broadcast when I'm teaching um, any time uh, any time that I've made a mistake. Otherwise, keep it zipped and wait. Um, you can ask a question in the text chat uh, if you want to. And, and I'm monitoring the text chat over in Discord under the channel called Ask Mr. T. And I'm also monitoring the text over in the YouTube. I'll try to keep an eye on that. 
Um, but um, basically the idea is those kind of problems, we can try and fix them when I take a break. So right now I'm not teaching, and this is the part that's gonna get cut out of the final broadcast. So when I go and, um, when I go and cut this up, you're, we're gonna end up having a lesson that's just learning about stuff for the kids who come in late, and they don't have to, they don't have to hear about your Discord problems or whatever, right? So this is the time that we talk about it. Everyone who wants to can talk or chat um, with this kind of stuff, but um, during this time, when I'm over on this screen here, but when I go back to start teaching again, we need to keep it um, under control so that I can teach without having my lesson being interrupted by your problems. Because whoever else is here at home learning this, like Salima is going to mosque in a few minutes and she'll be coming back to this lesson again later. She doesn't need, when she logs on to here this evening to finish the project, she doesn't need to hear um, all of your problems, right? And so that's the stuff that gets cut out of the broadcast later. I'm sorry to lecture you guys anyway, but just trying to explain the rules to you. Okay, so um, our building is not scrolling properly. It is appearing. Yeah, it's going, so something is making it go across the screen set. Hold it. I think I, let me just look at my co uh, code here again. Repeat until set X to building X minus scroll X. X position minus 240. All these numbers are right. Until I started doing this, these guys were appearing here though. So why would they suddenly pop over to the other side of the screen? There's nothing else in here. This is all just boring. Set X to building X minus scroll X. Let me, sorry, I'm gonna get back to the code, to uh, the code screen here again so you guys can see me. So if anyone has any ideas about what is going on here, so our guys, yeah, thanks, Salima. Okay, that one, so it's appearing at the, oh. So it has something to do with the way our scroll X variable is changing. Let me go back to my ground and just double check a couple of things here, guys. So this is the kind of thing that normally I would have just picked. Set the scroll X variable to something. Set the sp scroll X variable? I'm, I'm doing that over the ground here though, aren't I? Let's have a look. No. Uh, no, I'm not. Oh. I've never set the scroll X variable anywhere here. So this is one of the things where sometimes when you do stuff in the wrong order, it messes everything up, right? So there's no reference to soul scroll X. I haven't initialized the scroll X variable here in the ground, eh? Where? We have. Um, but the star on the rocket ship. On the rocket ship, I set the scroll X variable. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, set scroll X to zero. Okay. So the scroll X. This is so weird. Yeah, it seems to be. You see, it's being set up where it's following the scroll X instead of going over to the left-hand side of the screen the way it's supposed to. Okay, let me, um, I've got a finished version of the game here. I just want to double check and make sure everything is the same in that version. You guys who are eagle-eyed here can really help me out with this as well. So this is the finished version of the scramble game, guys. And let's go look at um, the, um, the dome and see how the code works in here and just make sure that we haven't made any horrible mistakes. All right, I've got an if touching here. This part we haven't added yet. Set building, set X to building X minus scroll X. Oh, X position equals minus 240. Did I put a positive 240 there in the other version? back to our um, dome. No, nope, that's correct. X position to minus 240. So, set object height. See, so let me just show you how this is supposed to look, guys. So we've got our, our things being formed along the right-hand side. Whoa, okay, we're not gonna get to there yet. Okay. So 
unless anyone has an obvious idea for what's going on here, I think we should just keep going and maybe we can catch it a little later on if it makes more sense. The, so the code that has to do with the scrolling is almost all inside of our, um, okay, I'm gonna go back to my version of the game here. So our player, uh, forever change scroll X by two. So that's the only thing in the player here that affects the scroll X. We're setting the variable and changing it by two so that it goes up. So that part, we really can't mess up. The mistake must be in the ground or inside the dome. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my dome here again. And, uh, okay, Salima, uh, it, you don't have to apologize. It's, uh, I'm sorry that the schedule doesn't, uh, doesn't work for you anymore, but um, so, um, we will uh, just come back in and join us and I'm sure we'll have another chance for you to learn with us um, again and um, the video will be available for you to watch later so thanks for joining us and we'll see you later um, okay darn it how am I gonna fix this so let me go back to my reference code here again set x to so the ground is scrolling properly right so there's there's really nothing wrong with the ground here it's gotta be inside the dome, but I don't see anything in the dome code. Let's just do this quickly line by line. I... Okay, so it's 240 plus scroll X. When I started the clone show, go to front, set building X to 240, set object height, repeat until X position equals minus 240, set X to building X minus scroll X. and repeating until and then deleting the clone let me delete that clone at the end here i don't think that's going to make any difference though all right guys we got a soldier ahead here i don't have a clear idea of what's going on here but um we're going to um just keep going and um worst case scenario i'll just um I'll add on to the edited version of this file and I'll show you um, and I'll I'll put the fix in later because we just got to keep going here. It is 11.45 and we have at least an hour more work to do, guys. So I don't know, is this too long for you guys? Is this too much time to spend on a Saturday doing this? I might have to find a different way to do these lessons, right? I've got so much stuff to do here with a big game like this. Splitting it into three parts is a much better idea, but... Um, I can't be on here three days a week because I'm working during the daytime. So this is what I'm trying to figure out is how to get these lessons out to you guys. Um, I'm, I I'm think that there might be some benefit to actually just taping it in advance and then releasing it to you guys as well. So one of the things I'm playing around with is maybe doing a, doing a coding show where, um, where I release new episodes a couple of times a week with these kind of lessons, and then we do the uh, the other Chromeworks um, Club broadcast with the remixes and the fun stuff once a week on Saturday, and maybe that will work better. Still experimenting, guys, anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna keep coding here. I don't know what the problem is, but hopefully we can um, sort this out as time goes on. If anyone wants to chime in with, um, with a suggestion, uh, then that would be great. Um, Retro Gamer, oh yeah, sorry. Um, that's, um, that's Thane, eh? So I've already talked to Thane. If you have uh, anything else you want to add, you can go ahead before I get in. Thane, are you good now, or? Okay. Uh, you're good now? Okay. All right, so we're going to get back to the coding. I cannot fix this problem now. I'm hoping that as we go along here, there might be some little variable that didn't get set. And as we go through the rest of the code, this problem might fix itself. This kind of thing has happened before. Um, if I'm building this in a different order from the way that, that we're building it here, sometimes components don't start working until later. So let's just start blasting through this and see where we get. And I'm sure we'll fix it at some point. Okay. All right, so Mr. T stumped here. I'm not quite sure there's something a little awry with the scrolling, but that's not gonna stop us from finishing our game. And um, and hopefully the thing will fix itself somewhere along the line. So we're gonna keep going here and soldier through and hopefully the problem will fix itself. So we're still on the dome. 
Can we get to that coal? All right. And uh, yeah, so let's keep going here. All right, so I um, I added this delete this clone, but we don't need it yet. I was just doing that during the break. Okay, so this is where we were before the break. We did a repeat until our exposition is minus 240. Then we set X to building X minus scroll X. Now, the only other thing we need in here is an if statement that says that if this guy gets shot, he should destroy himself. So let's grab an if statement. And we're gonna go if touching. So let's grab our, uh, we actually need an or here because there's two things that could be touching, a missile or a bomb, right? So let's grab an or. So if I'm touching a uh, bomb or I'm touching a bullet, then we need to, um, to kill that thing. So let's do a couple of things. First, we want to change our score. So let's go to our variables. We're going to change our score by 100 points because these guys are worth 100. That's the city block, right? So change score by 100. I haven't saved my file lately. Um, now, the way we're going to do the explosion here for this guy is we're going to, in, we're going to delete this clone and replace it with a separate um, object that's called an explosion. So with, the other ob with some of the other objects, we actually... Oh, no, no, we're not. So hold it. Okay, we're just going to broadcast a message here that says bomb exploded, okay? And I think that's important because there's some other objects that need to know that the bomb got exploded, including the bomb, right? The bomb has to know it's that when it... Back. Yes? Um, I kind of got closer to the problem, I think. Did you solve it, Thane, or do you think oh, you solved it? Oh, but I got... I'm getting closer. Um, okay, so... what? Set X to scroll X minus building X, and building X minus scroll X. Really? Hold it. Uh, building X minus scroll... And you went scroll X minus building X? Yeah. Yeah. Let me check that in um, the finished version of the game. Building X minus scroll X. Well, that's not the way it is in my... in the working version of the game. Um, let me try that and just see what it does, but I don't think that's the solution. Let's have a look here. It'll work, but it's... No, you see, it's... it's oh! So it's, a it's moving off to the right of the screen. Yeah, that's not it. It's a clever idea, but um, that doesn't appear to have done it, Thane. Thanks for okay. trying. All right. Uh, so we're going to change score by 100. We're going to broadcast bomb exploded. And what that broadcast is going to do is later on it's going to tell the bomb, delete yourself, because we don't want the bomb going through multiple objects like um, like it's go through the ground. And we also want it, uh, if it hits the ground, we want it to explode on that as well. So we want to make sure that if a bomb is exploded, it doesn't continue existing on the screen. So we're going to go broadcast message, which is under our events. And we're gonna go broadcast a bomb exploded. Oh, it's not here, so let me just type that in. Bomb exploded. And so as soon as we get that bomb exploded message, we can delete our bomb, and that will make sure that we don't have extra ones, um, or we don't have it living on the screen longer than it needs to. Okay, now we're gonna do that costume change thing that I showed you before. So let's go to our control blocks. We'll grab a repeat. We're putting it, we're still inside the if statement. I'm gonna go repeat seven times. We're gonna go looks. Next costume. Where's our next costume? Right here. And so that's going to go through the whole explosion thing. And then after we're done changing our costumes, we're going to delete the clone. And that'll, that'll get rid of the guy. Now, we also need to delete the clone at the very bottom here. So this is deleting him if he gets killed by a bomb. But down here at the bottom is if he doesn't get killed by a bomb, he's going to go to the left-hand side of the screen. And he'll still have to delete himself. So let's add a control delete this clone right underneath here. Perfect. Okay, so now let's click the green flag and see what happens. Probably nothing, right? So the only thing we'll be able to see here is that our cities, which are still appearing in the wrong place, will delete themselves when they get to the left-hand side of the screen. Now we'll be able to shoot them once our bombs are working, but our bombs aren't working yet, so we'll uh, hold tight with that. Okay. Um, whoa. 
Okay, set to object height. That appears to be all there is inside the um, inside the dome. So, okay, the problem is I'm going to try and duplicate this stuff now and do it inside the missile, or sorry, do it inside the um, inside the fuel tank and inside the other object, the enemy missile, and. I'm wondering whether we're going to run into the same problem with them. It seems likely we're going to wind up with the same problem with them. Let's um, go over to the enemy missile. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do a little So we're going to code the enemy missile next. Or what would be easier? The Since we're trying to troubleshoot this. Let's do the fuel tank next, actually. The fuel depot or the fuel tank. Um, so I'm going to take some of this code and copy it over there, but uh, it's not exactly the same, but the big chunks of it that we can use uh, all over again. So I'm going to take the three big chunks of code here. I'm going to, I'm going to copy them all over to the fuel tank. So remember how to do that. I'm going to grab one of these objects. I'm going to move it over to the sprite window here where our fuel tank is. And you'll see if we look carefully, let me zoom in a little bit that when you move over to the fuel tank, it wiggles a little bit. That's your signal that you put it in the right spot. You're move, pointing your mouse cursor at it and let go. And that will actually copy it over to the um, other object, to the fuel tank. Okay, let's do that for the other stuff too. Back to the dome. I'm going to take this piece and copy it. And I'll take this piece and copy it as well. I'll go in here and clean up the Mr. blocks. Colmack. Yes. I found a solution to the problem. You did. Let's hear it, buddy. Um, I tried doing building X divided by scroll X. And um, you're saying that works? I think uh, so. I well, think is it working it. on your screen? Is it is it um, moving? All right. Moving. Uh, I'm a you little mean up. Do you mean up or just staying on the screen? It's supposed to look like it's planted on the ground and it's supposed to move along with the ground. Let me show you guys what it's supposed to look like in the finished game just so that we can make this clear again. So here's the finished game. You're moving over the ground. The things appear. And so there's a fuel depot. You see how it looks like it's part of the ground there? It actually, it looks like it's part of the ground and it's moving along with the ground here. That's what we're going for. If it doesn't look like that, then we still haven't figured it out yet. So I don't think your division sol uh, solution is gonna work right now, buddy. But um, all right, I'm gonna save my file. I'm gonna go back to, um, what was I working on? The fuel depots, fuel tanks. And let's go have a look at how these fuel tanks differ from the other ones. So we've got all the code here. Oh, I'm in the wrong version here. So here we are, fuel depot. So I've, I've copied all the text over. I just wanna make sure that everything's good here. So set object height, um, set wide, and so there's nothing really complicated about this. This set object height uh, block will be fine. Go down a little lower, and let's just compare this to the documentation. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is we, we gotta switch our costume to the first costume, which is called costume one here in our explosion thing. So we're gonna go switch costume to costume one, hide, forever set x to 240 oh forever set x to 240 whoa so this is different it says it just says set x to 240 and there's no mention of scroll x in there let me see what i do with the enemy missile as well set x oh oh Okay, I think that the, the Dome City has the wrong code in it and everything else has the right code in it. So what it's suggesting is just set X to 240 here. Let me try that with the Dome City. Let's just go back to the Dome City here and I am going to uh, set Fuel Depot at the very beginning set yeah, so set X to 240 instead of scroll X. Set X to 240 and see what that does. But that would lock it into, oh, look at that. Will you look at that? What? 
Okay, so that was the solution to the problem. We didn't need that 240 plus scroll X. So my problem was that I started with the dome, which was the one that had the code in the wrong place. So let me see if I can figure out what's going on here. So I'm setting the X coordinate to, of the thing to 240, and I'm continuously doing that, but it's moving across the screen because I keep changing its location, set X to its building X. So it's temporarily moving it back here. Oh. Okay. I don't remember how I got this thing working, guys, but it seems to be working fine now. So let's just knock on wood and hope that's working properly now. So let's wait for another. No. What? Okay, I'm gonna keep working. Okay, let's go back to our fuel depot and um, just to see what, what, what's what here. Okay, so fuel depot, um, where, let me save my file again. This is not going smoothly today again, surprisingly enough. So we're gonna set X to 240. All right, then when I started the clone, we're gonna show, go to the front layer, set building X to 240 plus scroll X. That's where the 240 plus scroll X goes. Mr. Tomek? Yes? I try sc sharing my screen, because when I did kind of part something. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can have a look at your uh, at yours, yeah. So do you know how to share your screen? All right, I'm gonna take a break right now and we're gonna try and sort this out a couple more minutes, guys. I'm sorry about that and I'll be right back. All right, so we're looking at Thane's screen now. He has something to show us. Sharing it. Yeah. Guys, let... No, 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 I've got to put it onto Are YouTube. We... Aren't we supposed to do the set building X to 240 plus scroll X I'm, in, I, do I, in the uh, dome too? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to sort that out right now. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to see if I can get the fuel depot working first, uh, key in, and then if we do, then we'll go back and have a look at the, um, at the, um, domes again. Okay. So just hold tight on the dome for a it second. Worked. Okay. I tried it didn't work. It didn't work. Oh, what? No, it what? did. It does. It does. What does work? Sorry, Chris. Mm -hmm. What you just did now. Oh, what I did well, now works, eh? Okay. Yeah. I think we should just keep going with this um, little experiment right now. I think I'm kind of very close to the end to figuring this out, guys. So um, I don't mm -hmm. see your screen right now, Thane, and um, I, I don't, I'm not sure that you've really solved the problem right now anyway, eh? So yeah, you're not sharing. It doesn't look like you're sharing properly anyway. All right. I'm, I'm doing uh, it. It's like across the screen okay um all right by the way uh thane if you're trying to share screens it usually works better if you're um if you maximize your screen if you hit like f11 in google chrome that um because right now i'm not seeing anything except a little orange screen when i look at what you're doing here um okay let's get back to the coding because they don't have a camera um no thane has a camera i'm pretty sure he does one well, well no don't. you don't you don't need a camera to screen share anyway. Oh. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. I'm just going to get back into it again, and we're just going to keep... Uh, or, um, all right. Yeah. So let's just keep working along here. We'll just see. I, it seems like the problem that was inside the um, dome is not in the fuel tank. And by, by checking this code and making sure everything's right here, I think we might end up fixing our code for the dome as well. So I'm just going to start off for... Um, our um, coding part again here and we'll see if we can solve this okay we're back we're still i think we're getting closer to solving this problem so we're just going to keep working on the fuel depot it seems like there's some discrepancies between the code and the fuel depot and the dome city and if we finish working on this guy i think we're going to figure out what's going wrong here so let's just get back into it and we'll just keep checking the code against my documentation and uh, change it where necessary 
Okay, so, uh, so I'm still inside the fuel tank here, and I'm going to assume that my documentation is right for the fuel tank and not right for the dome. So I'm just going to do everything here that changes this to the way that it should be on the documentation. So go to front layer, set building X to 240 plus scroll X, set object height, repeat until X position is equal to minus 240, set to building X, so set X to building X minus scroll X, so far so good. We have an if statement here that all has to do with what happens if it gets hit by a bomb. We can ignore that. And then we have a delete this clone right at the middle. Here. Uh, yeah, so this is all good. So the copy of the code that I gave you here should all be proper. We set our X to 240 here. So this should be working for the fuel tanks. Yeah, the fuel tanks are working beautifully now. Hey, what's the tea? Yes. Do Chris? you not need to uh, make it so you refuel your fuel when you uh, um, explode them? Yes, we have to do all that. There's just many steps involved here, Chris. We're doing it one step at a time. So that all that code is going to happen inside the fuel gauge, and um, we're going to deal with that later. But uh, we are going to – there is a – oh, there is a – sorry, you are correct that we do need something here inside this um, collision thing that changes, right? So you're right. This collision block – sorry, Chris, you are absolutely correct here. That's a save my bacon. So we have – um, we have to add the fuel stuff inside the code here. I misunderstood what you're saying, but absolutely we have to account for the fact that our fuel is disappearing here. And then when we, um, so we're gonna make a minor change here. So we're in the fuel tank inside this if statement, if touching bomb or touching bullet. Let's just double check this code. Change score by, not by 100, but by 20. We're gonna change our fuel right here. So we're gonna go to our variables. We're gonna change our fuel back to 100 again because we're dead here. We have to refill our fuel tanks for our second ship. Oh no, 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 that's not, that's the right, that's the wrong spot. Change fuel by, what, by two? If touching bullet or touching bomb. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 sorry. We're gonna change our fuel by two, so that will give us two extra units of fuel. There's 10, the, the fuel tank holds 10 units of fuel. So hitting a fuel tank will, uh, let me save my file. And my um, Discord is all messed up here too. Just a second, guys. All right, so I think I'm streaming properly now. So we're gonna change our fuel fuel by two and in here we need to tell it that if if um, that we can't add fuel if we have more than 10 we can't have 11 fuel here because of the maximum uh, tank capacity is 10 so I'm going to put an if statement in here right below this this is a little tricky so if I try to plunk this in here I want it to go ugh, it's a little difficult so what I'm going to do is I want it to go underneath the um, broadcast and I'm going to grab everything else here so I'm going to grab the repeat and the delete this clone I'm going to get rid of it for a second I'm going to put the if statement in and then I'm going to put the repeat back in so that it's underneath I'll save this file again if you guys ever having trouble this is a little bit finicky okay so I'm going to go if and now I'm going to put a greater than sign here and I'm going to go if fuel is greater than 10 so let's go to our variables if fuel is greater than 10 set fuel back to 10 again so it can never go higher than 10 set fuel to 10 all right thanks again chris for alerting me to this i thought everything inside here was the same but obviously there's some different stuff here because we're dealing with a fuel tank um, okay, so we should be good to go with the fuel tank. So now we should be able to figure out what is wrong with our dome cities, right? Our dome cities are not appearing properly, but our, um, our fuel tanks are. So what I think we can do is, so the changes were we ch um, right here under when green flag click, let's go back to our dome city. It should be set X to 240. And that's right there now. And Let's go back to when I started the clone here. So we want to set building X to, I'm going to, 
Okay, so I think this is the spot here where we're setting our building X. Inside our dome, we don't have anything here. And here's where it says set building X to 240 plus scroll X. And I think this is the spot that I forgot. So let's try adding that. Set building X to 240 um, plus scroll X. So let's grab a scroll X. Yeah, so setting the building X to 240 didn't make sense there. Okay, let's check this out now. Here's our dome city, the first one, the second one. Beautiful, okay, our, de our dome cities are working nice and they're floating a little bit too high above the land, eh? The one thing we didn't do inside, so once we finished probing here, at the bottom of our probing, we were supposed to bring it down a little bit. Just so it's now no longer touching the ground, but we need to settle it back down to the ground again. So we're moving it too high. So imagine this is our dome city. We're moving it up, 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 up until it's not touching. Then we have to rest it back down to the ground again. So the very bottom of, uh, of our dome city code here, I'm just going to tell it change X or change Y by minus 20 and that will settle it back down to ground level again. So let's try that and see where, what happens with our domes. Yeah, you see it's down a little lower now and now it looks like it's attached to the ground. We have to do the same thing to our fuel tank as well. So let's go down to our fuel tank and at the bottom of that big long block of code, we're gonna change our Y there again by, let's try minus 20 and see what it looks. It's a different size so it might not be the same number Let's give it a try and see where how our fuel tanks are doing. There we go. Yeah, that's looking nice now. All right, we obviously have too many dome cities. They're supposed to be rare. So let's go back to our ground sprite for a second. And I'm going to change that pick random back so that that first pick random comes up with missiles, enemy missiles, instead of um, the other kind. Okay, so we're good to go there. So now everything should be... Fine, we've got a bunch of variables visible on the screen. I'm just gonna go hide them right now while I'm waiting for stuff to test here. And over on the dome, we're hiding that variable too. Okay, so stuff is showing up quite nicely now. We haven't got the enemy missile going up yet. We've got our, oh, you see the, the, do the fuel depots are a little bit lower than I want them to be. So I'm actually gonna change that number to minus 10 maybe. And I think they should start coming up a little bit better. They might occasionally be a little bit off the ground. And so you have to just get that number right. Okay, that looks fine to me. All right, we're back on track here, guys. Nice. All right, so let's, um, I think that's all we have to do with the fuel depot. And the last thing we're going to do with the objects here is the enemy missile. So let's... Um, Take a little quick break and then we will do the enemy missile. All right, so um, Salim is good. So Salim, you didn't have to go. I, I guess you were confused eh, because the um, you thought it was Friday. Is that what was going on? Because shoot, you were about to say you were going off to mosque, but it's Saturday, right? Mosque is on Friday, isn't it? Okay. Anyway, you probably got confused about the day of the week. It's tough when you're not in school, eh? Keeping track of things. All right, so um, we are doing much better now. That one, it's amazing how one little problem like that, one little discrepancy in the code can create huge problems for you. And I guess somewhere along the line, I did something wrong in this version of the code and I never caught it. So um, lesson learned. I'll uh, try to be more careful with my documentation next time, guys. If I had done, the um, fuel depot first, I wouldn't have run into this problem. It was just bad luck for me. Okay, so we're gonna start coding the enemy missile. I'm gonna click over there. Okay, everybody, we're back and um, we are ready to start working on our enemy missile. It's gonna use a lot of the same code as the other stuff. We know our fuel tank's good now, so let's copy over our fuel tank first and then we'll make some modifications to it. So let's go to our new, back to our screen. All right here. So uh, I'm gonna go back to my fuel tank and let's shrink things a little bit. And again, I've got three blocks of code that I wanna bring over to the enemy missile. So let's drag them over one at a time, make sure it wiggles. 
Here's the second one. And here's the third one. Then back to the missile. We're going to clean up blocks, which is just a right click, and that'll put everything back into a decent order again. All right. And so let's go change the code around a little bit. There's a few other things that have to happen with these missiles, because they don't just sit there. They actually launch themselves, right? I've got a costume here for these guys um, that shows them when they're on the ground. And then these next three costumes all have to do with this um, with the thrust coming out the back of the missile. I just drew something with red marker there that makes it that's going to make it look like it's cycling through um, its um, its rocket engine going um, out the back. Okay, so um, back to code. Uh, enemy missile. Okay, so I've got when I start as a clone. And when I started the clone, oh, I don't have a green flag here. I didn't, did I forget to, I think I copied one block over twice and the other one once. That was the problem. Let's go back to our fuel tank. We'll grab our green flag. Okay, clean up blocks again. All right, so at the beginning here, we're gonna set our X to 240. So uh, when green flag clicked, we're going to do, this is similar, but we have to, we don't have to change, oh, we do have to change costumes here, right? So let's change, make sure our costume is costume one, which is good. We are in the missile. We want to uh, hide our guy for refresher. And we want to set our X to 240. So that's actually all good now. Now, when I start as a clone, we're going to show we can still go to the front, that's fine. We're gonna set building X to 240 plus scroll X. And we're gonna set the object height, that's all good. Now, repeat until X position is minus 240, that part's good. Now we're gonna set X to, now we have a different variable here for the position of the, um, of the building. This isn't a building anymore, this is a rocket. So there's another variable here called rocket X. Let's put that in there. So it's rocket X minus scroll X. Let me save again. Uh, and we're gonna go if touching a bomb or bullet, then we're gonna change our score by 10, only 10 points for shooting um, missiles. We're gonna, uh, now, there's a bunch of stuff we don't need here. Let's dismantle this if statement for a second and we're gonna build it back up here again because this is quite a bit different here. We might need a few of these blocks, but probably not a lot of them. So if touching, we're gonna change our score. Now we're doing a different kind of explosion for these guys. They don't, this guy doesn't have a costume for an explosion. So we're gonna use this explosion sprite. To, it, to uh, remember I said that we're gonna do two different kinds of explosions. So now we're gonna substitute this guy with an explosion sprite. The thing we have to do though is have the explosion sprite appear in the right location. So in this moment when the thing dies, we're gonna save our X and Y coordinates and put them into a new variable called explode X and explode Y. And that's gonna tell the explosion where to appear on the screen, which is basically on top of the missile that just got destroyed. So let's go set variable. We're gonna set explode X to our current X position. So go to motion and put in an X position. And we'll do the same thing for explode Y. So I'm gonna go set explode Y to our Y position. And so that will tell it where to make the explosion appear. Then we're gonna create an explosion. So I'm gonna go uh, under control. I'll go create a clone of myself, still inside the if statement. Great clone of explosion, not myself, sorry. And then we're gonna delete this clone, not the explosion, but we're gonna, we're gonna delete the clone of the enemy missile. So before we get rid of the enemy missile, we're gonna make sure there's an explosion there, and then we're basically good. All right, um, and I don't think we need anything else in here, so I'm just gonna trash the rest of this. So we are good to go for this part of the block. There's more to code inside our, um, our guy, though. Um, all right, this, so there's another block here now that's gonna make those missiles launch, right? So that's the next part we're gonna do. I'm gonna put that inside a separate when I start as a clone. Let me save my file or did I just do that? I forget. All right, when I start as a clone, let's switch to costume one.
Oh, we already did that. So we don't have to do switch to costume one twice. So we've already done that in the other area here, right? Uh, now we're going to have it wait again. So let's go wait for a random amount of time. So we'll go wait one second. And inside that spot, we'll put a random number. Random number is pick from... So I'm saying from between 0 0.5 and 4 seconds. So we want it to be a little unpredictable so that when you're on top of the missile, you never know it's, if it's going to go off right underneath you. So this is going to make the game a little more challenging. Now, I have a rocket sound here. I actually just designed this rocket. I couldn't find a decent launch sound, so I just went up to a microphone. I went like that. Let me show you what it sounds like. So I think I took, I recorded myself. Let me show you guys quickly what I did. I just went record audio. I went up to my microphone and I went like kind of like that. Then I saved it. Then I put made it lower pitched. Cool, eh? And so depending on what you want, you can get different kinds of sounds out of that. That sounds a little more like a dragon rather than a rocket, right? So whatever, it's just a homemade sound effect, a good example of how you can record your own sound effects using your own voice sometimes and just playing around with stuff. Uh, I'm going to delete that one because my other rocket sounds better. This one, yeah, I did a better job with that one. So that's our sound effect for launching rockets. Um, let's go back to our code here. So I would suggest if you guys want to, you should probably record your own sound effect for the ro launching rocket, or you can go find one on the internet, or just go with mine, whatever. I'm easy. So when I start the clone, we're going to pick a random amount of time. Then we're going to start that sound. So let's play that sound, uh, Rocket. Then we're going to have it move up until it, until it hits the edge of the screen. So let's go grab a, a repeat until block from our control blocks. Repeat until touching edge. So over to sensing, we're going to grab a touching edge command. And so what are we going to repeat? We're just going to go up and change our co and cycle through our costume. So let's go control. Uh, first of all, we have to make it move up. So we're going to change our Y. We're going to make it move at a speed of six. This is a configurable thing. If you want faster missiles, you can do a higher number here, guys. Let's go looks and we'll go next costume in here. And that's just going to make the tail of the uh, of the enemy missile flash. So we couldn't use next costume here if we had explosions inside our costume, right? Because it would go through the explosion every time it went through here. There are ways to code it. We could have told it go through costume one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then when it explodes, go through costume five, six, seven, eight. But I've done this a different way here just to show you guys that there are multiple ways you can code the same thing, right? So the fuel tanks are gonna explode in the first way, and this guy's gonna explode in the second way, which is um, to turn himself into an explosion, right? So someone's pounding upstairs. All right. So, um, uh, let me, sh okay, so the last thing we want to do is, is when we're done, uh, until we, we're repeating this until we touch the edge, and then we're just going to delete the clone, of course. So let's go to our control blocks. We'll go delete this clone, and I think we're good there now. So let's go save our file, and I think we can actually test this out and see if our rockets are working. So let's give her a try here. Oh, our rockets are appearing in the wrong place now, too. So I got the same problem with my scroll X here. And our rockets are not appearing nearly as often as they should. Something's going wrong here. So that has to do with the spawning of our rockets, maybe. Let's go back to our ground. Create clone of enemy missile. Are our missiles hidden or something? Let's have a look here. So the rockets are, oh yeah, I think my clones are all hidden. When I start the clone, show. No, they're showing here. Hide, show. Okay, let's check this out again. The first one appears in the middle of the screen, and then the rest of them appear way off again. Again, there's a discrepancy in my code here. Okay. Um... Uh, Let's have another quick look at this. Set. Whoa, this is building X, not rocket X. Okay, I made a mistake here. So 
under when I start as a clone, the first one here where we set building X, we're gonna change this one to rocket X. That's the problem. So it's not tracking properly because we didn't give it the proper X coordinate. Now let's try that again. There we go. And our rockets are appearing. And after a random amount of time, you can see if I just do nothing, Sometimes they hit me, sometimes they just skin me. I played around with the times a lot, to, and between 0 0.5 and 4 seconds seems to be the best combination. So you can see how unpredictable those rockets are. It's a little, especially when you're deking around trying to shoot these things inside valleys and stuff, it's quite tricky staying away from these guys. All right, this is looking really good now. We're getting closer. All right, so nothing's destroyable yet. I really am itching to destroy something. It's been a frustrating coding session so far. So let's start destroying stuff, guys. First thing we're gonna have to do is fix this explosion up, though. So um, let's uh, let me take a quick break and make sure everything's cool, and uh, then I'll get right back to it. All right, guys, so um, Salima told me that she was fine with a really long coding session, like sitting here for two or three hours the way we are today. We started today at 10, so we're two and a half hours into this, guys. So I, as I said, this is like a two or three hour experience instead of doing it as a three hour session. If this isn't working for you guys, if, this, if, the, if there's no way to make this work, then we'll have to find a different way to do it. But right now I'm trying to keep my weekdays free so that I can do my day job once I figure out what my day job is, right? I can't keep uh, live streaming every day in the morning or whatever because then that's an entire week. Um, even if I do it like only on Monday morning at 10 o'clock, for example, that means that I can't offer any virtual camps on Monday morning basically the whole time. And so that's why I'm reluctant to do stuff on the weekdays. So what I'm thinking right now is we do these long sessions. If you don't like them, then you just come and watch the recorded version after the fact, and you won't be able to join in with, with the club stuff. We're always gonna do this fun thing at the beginning from 10 to 11 though, where you guys can join in and come and hang out with each other or whatever. So I'm gonna see how this works. Please let me know what you guys think about this. You know, I'm, I'm very eager to, uh, to hear your comments. All right, so let's get back to the coding. Anyone have anything? I don't see any discussion in the chat at all. Uh, everyone's good. Last call. Last Mr. call. Chief? Yes. I think I'm gonna go. Okay. Um, no worries. Sorry. Who was that? That was um, the uh, Thane. Okay. So is this a little long for you, buddy. What are you thinking about the length of it? Is it just too yeah, much? It's a little long. Yeah. So normally, as you saw before, I was doing this in little one-hour session. So I'm gonna have to find a way. This is a little exhausting for you guys, eh? Um, yeah. Yeah, and, it, and we're getting into lunch hour and stuff like that here in Ontario as well, and for you as well in Florida there as well, eh? So um, just catch the rest of this on the on the tape thing, and we're, I'm going to talk about this some more with uh, my users here, and we're going to try and figure out um, what, uh, what to do here about yeah, this, because I've got too much content here. Yeah, anyway, thanks for joining me, Thane, and I will see you next time, and, and this will be online if you want to watch it later, and, and we'll cut out all this stuff, and we'll just have the lesson for you. So we'll see you around, buddy. Bye. Bye. All right, let's blast through this, guys. Uh, I'm committed to finishing. At least today we're doing a marathon. I don't, th I don't know if we're going to be doing this again because it's just lasting way too long, eh? And this is what's going to happen every time. Maybe when we do the live coding with Jeffrey, it'll be a little more under control. I'm not sure. Okay. Let's uh, get back to it. So let's we're gonna program the explosion now. Let me uh, get Sorry, to the right page. I don't know that. <laughs> um, what's her name? I'm not gonna say her name because I'm gonna call her again. She thought I was talking to her, my home assistant. That starts with an A. I'm not gonna say her name though. All right. Um, so I'm back on the explosion. Okay. All right, we're back. Um, let's just quickly code the explosion here um, that's gonna happen as soon as we uh, kill our uh, enemy missile. And we're just, so uh, let's go have a look at it. All right, so I'm clicked on the explosion. You can see that I've, I downloaded this explosion off the internet. It's a really nice little graphic. Looks much better than the one I drew myself. And so I decided to use that one for the um, enemy missiles exploding and for some other stuff exploding as well. We use this a couple of times in the code here. Um, so to code it, we just need a green flag. Let's go back to our events. We'll grab a green flag. We're gonna tell it to hide. 
we're gonna now it's way too big guys let me show the explosion for you um it's it's default size is like this which is just way big so i'm gonna use code here to change its size i have a change to 30 percent in the thing here but because we might change the size of things as time goes on here let's just dump, uh, be extra careful here and we'll go um set size to so under our looks menu uh no that's not it set size here it is set size to 30 percent now you can go a little bigger or smaller than that if you want this is what the explosion is going to look like that's about right for me you could go a little smaller than that for the missiles though eh? let's maybe 20. oh but the thing is we're using the same explosion for everything let's just stick with 30. okay um now when i started the clone we're not creating a clone here because the clone's being created over in another object so all we have, all we need here is that when i started the clone we're going to show let's go to our looks menu we'll go show then we're going to play a sound we've got a sound effect here called 8-bit explosion we're going to go to the spot where the missile got destroyed. So let's go go to X, Y, and inside there, we're going to pop that variable. Remember, we saved the explode X and the explode Y location. That's the spot where the missile was when it exploded. Then let's just have it go through the costume. So it's going to repeat six times because there's six different explosion or seven different explosion costumes. We're going to go to our looks menu and go next costume. And then we're gonna delete this clone again. So we're gonna go delete this clone. There we go. And now our explosion should be working properly. We can't really show it here. So let me just um, disconnect this from when I started the clone and just play it here. And you can see it working. So that's what it's gonna look like when we destroy these guys. All right. So we're good to go with the explosion. Now we can start our missiles and stuff like that, and that will actually be almost the end of the game. We've got about, about 15 or 20 minutes left, guys, and thanks those of you who are sticking with me. Thanks for being patient. All right, a whole bunch of little stuff we have to do here for um, the bullets and the um, bombs, right? So let's start with the bullets because they're a little bit easier. So let's go over to the bullet. I've already designed my own bullet here. It's just a little yellow dot. It's hard to see on the screen. It is tiny. It's a little one pixel dot, basically. You can change the color of this. You can change the shape of it. You can make it square. You can make it green. I've changed my ship to green, so I'm just gonna change my bullet to green now as well. Might as well go back to our code and we'll start coding this quickly. So we're gonna try and blast through this as quick as we can, guys, because um, this has been a long enough session. So when green flag clicked, let's hide forever. Go to player. So what we're telling it to do, so we're going to go over to where, where it says go to random position here under motion. We're going to change it to go to player. So what that means is this bullet's going to be hovering on top of our spaceship at all times, right? It's a, and so when it's, but hidden. And so when it's time to make a clone, it will always know where to create the clone from because it's going to make it on top of the spaceship, right? So that's the way it works. Now, um, now to fire, we're gonna hit the space key. You can do a different key if you want. So let's go to um, our events. We'll grab when space key pressed. And we're gonna tell it to create a clone, but we have to do it with a timer. So this is the uh, new way that we're doing timers now. What days we're using the built-in timer. This is something I've started doing recently. So I'm gonna say if timer is greater than whatever our delay is so let's go we need to grab a timer block that's over in sensing uh we need a greater than let's start with a gr greater than sign which is an arrow pointing to the right now let's go to our sensing blocks and grab a timer it's a light blue one so if our timer is greater if a certain amount of time has passed then we're going to create a bullet i'm going to put 0 0.2 down there and i'm going to show you how you can modify that in a second so what's happening um we're going to create a clone of myself, but only if the timer has reached 0 0.2 or greater. Otherwise, it's not gonna let us shoot. And we're gonna go control, create a clone in here, create a clone of myself, which is the bullet. We're gonna play a sound. This is just the scratch bullet sound, which is called pew pew. Just like that, it's a nice laser sound. 
And then at the end, we're gonna have to set the time the timer back down to zero again. So let's go to our sensing and we'll go reset timer. So basically every time you shoot, it'll reset the timer back to zero again and then you can shoot again. And that's gonna control your speed. Otherwise you'd be spamming bullets like crazy. Let me show you that uh, quickly in the game here. So when I hit the space key, oh, our bullets don't know what to do when they're clones. So I haven't programmed that yet. Let's, um, let's do that first before we uh, test this out. So when I start as a clone, control blocks, when I start as a clone, what do our clones do? Well, the first thing to do, die, is to make yourself visible. You can see that they were invisible just now. Then we're going to keep moving until we hit the edge of the screen. So repeat until touching edge, which is under our sensing. Let me save my file. In case anyone's stuck here. Um, so repeat until touching edge, which is right here under our sensing blocks, not touching mouse pointer, but touching edge. And what are we gonna do here? We're gonna move. So I'm gonna tell my missiles to move at a speed of 10. And I'm gonna tell them if touching ground, delete this clone, what? Oh! Yeah, so if we accident, if we're shooting in a cliff face, and we, we end up shooting the ground, we don't want the uh, missile to go through the ground, right? We want it to stop and hit the dirt, basically, right? So that's going to be what's going to protect our things. So I'm going to say if touching ground, let's grab a, an if statement in here, control if touching, uh, which is under our sensing blocks, touching ground if touching ground then delete this clone is all we have to do so let's go to our control blocks we'll go delete this clone if touching ground then delete this clone and otherwise we're going to delete the clone anyway because this missile is doomed if it leaves the screen it's or our bullets if it leaves the screen it's going to delete itself and if it um if it leaves the uh Sorry, if it touches the ground, it's also going to delete itself. Okay, I think we can shoot now, so let's give it a try. I'm going to hit this green flag. And you can see, even if I hold down the button and try to spam, it's only going to shoot them every... And we can actually destroy stuff now, right? The game's looking good. Though, we're able to shoot through multiple things at once. You see how I can't shoot this uh, city, though, without killing myself? So this is where the bombs come in handy, right? And you see that our bullets are disappearing. Beautiful, we're getting very close here, guys. All right, um, the one thing I wanted to show you guys is how you can change the, the missile speed. So this is configurable by you guys, remember. So this 0.2 thing is, ch is controlling how fast you can spam bullets out. So if I got rid of this entirely, um, if I just, created it like this, you can create way too many bullets. Let me show you how that works. Whoa. And you can basically do that until, until it runs out of bullets. And that will eventually crash your game. So that this is the reason that we actually limit the speed of the bullets. So right now I'm limiting it to 0 0.2 seconds. Let's see what that looks like. Now if you want it faster, you can try 0 0.1. Let's see what that looks like. Or slower, we could go like 0 0.5, like two bullets per second. Or 0 0.5, there we go. So it's up to you guys to decide how hard or easy you want your shooting to be. And we just control it there. Okay, our bullets are working fine. Everything's smashing into each other properly. Let's go over to our... Um, well, while I'm on this page, there's a couple more little things to do. But no, let, let's go actually over the bomb first. So the boom, the boom, as Inspector Clouseau would say. Here it is. All right, the bomb is the is the last fairly big um, bunch of code to do here because there's a lot that has to happen with these bombs. So we're going to do that, and uh, we're going to be done fairly soon, guys. So let's go over to the bomb. I'm going to take a quick break.
everyone still with us here? Are you guys uh, running out of steam? This is way too long for a coding session, eh? A lot of people have been bugging me, keep going, keep going, keep going, but uh, now that I actually try one of these where we try to do one game in a whole day, I realize this is not a good plan. This just seems way too long for you guys, for kids your age especially, so um, I don't think we're gonna be doing it quite this way again, guys. Let's figure it out. I will, uh, I will come up with something. All right. Um, let's go back to the bomb. Okay. One last thing to build here, guys, and that's the bomb. So let's get to that right now. So I'm over on my bomb sprite. Let's look at his costumes. You can see that I've taken this guy and tilted him. I have, so when he comes out of the spaceship, he's dropping like this, but then because he's nose heavy, he turns a little bit and then comes down like this. He has a little rocket that's kind of pushing him forward a little bit too. And then when his rocket runs out, he just starts falling like that until he hits the ground, okay? So um, let's code that. So when green flag clicked events, when green flag clicked, Let's go hide him, because we're making clones again. And we're going to tell him to sit on the player the same way the bullet does. So we'll go to forever, go to under sensing, go to, oh, that's under motion, sorry. Go to random position and change it to player, go to player. Let me save my file. Okay. Um, that's it for that block. That's actually all we need under the green flag. So now we need to tell the guy what to do. So he's following, he's ready to be dropped. Now when we make him launch, which is when I hit the B key, um, then he's gonna do something. So let's start with the B key here. We'll, we'll create our bomb. So we're gonna go to our control blocks. We're gonna grab the one here. Oh, the event block, sorry. We're gonna go to our events and we'll tell it when I press the letter B on my keyboard, you can make it a different keyboard key if you like. And uh, we're gonna do the same things we did with the other one. Actually, I'm gonna grab uh, the code from um, my bomb and from my missile or my bullet and drag it over. So this stuff here, the if timer, I'm gonna drag it over to the bomb just to save myself a little bit of time here. So if timer is greater than, we're gonna make the bombs a little slower, so we'll change it to if timer is greater than 0 0.5. Let me save my file in case you guys got lost there. We're gonna create a clone of myself. We're gonna play a sound, not pew, but uh, bomb. Where's the bomb? What was the bomb sound again? Retro bomb, here it is, yeah. Retro bomb, and then we're gonna reset the timer. So here's the code. And that will get us get our bombs created. It won't get them dropping though. So let me try hitting the B key. You can hear it's making the sound, but we can't actually see the clone yet because it's invisible. So let's go over to create a uh, when we start as a clone now. We'll go to our control blocks. When I start as a clone, we're gonna show. Go to our looks menu, show. All right, there's two variables that control how our bomb moves. One is called bomb gravity, and that's going to control how fast the bomb goes down. Our bomb is going to not go down steadily. It's going to, st like most things dropping, this is thanks to our friend Isaac Newton, who figured this stuff out three or 400 years ago. We know that when things fall, they accelerate at a certain force. They get faster as they drop, so they start off slow, and they go faster, 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 faster. So we're gonna do that with the bomb, that with the uh, gravity variable. It's gonna start off small and it's gonna build on itself and go faster and faster as we go down. Okay, so at the beginning, we have to initialize that variable. Let's go set bomb gravity to minus three. That's the speed it's gonna start falling down at, then it'll go faster and faster. Then bomb velocity is our second variable that we're creating and that's how far forward it's going. So bomb velocity, remember we want our, bo our bomb to shoot forward a little bit and then start going down because it has a little rocket behind it, right? So bomb velocity is the initial speed of 10. It's gonna start at 10, but it's gonna go slower. So the bomb gravity is gonna accelerate and the bomb velocity is gonna go slower. So it's gonna go, all right, sorry, I have to do it with the camera properly. So it's gonna go out like this and then down like that. Okay. Let's grab a repeat until and put it right under here. Control, repeat until, touching edge. So 
So let's go back to our sensing blocks, touching edge. And we're going to change X and change Y here. So let's go to our motion blocks. We'll grab a change X and a change Y. And we're going to fill those up with variables. We're going to change X by bomb gravity. No, no, change Y by bomb gravity, because that's how we go up and down. And we're going to change our bomb velocity, our X by bomb velocity. Now we're going to change those variables to make the velocity lower and the gravity higher. So we're going to go change variable, change bomb gravity by minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5. So the gravity number is going to get even lower. It's going to go from minus 3 to minus 3.5 to minus 4 to minus 5, and it'll just go faster and faster and faster. Strangely enough, by making the number smaller, right, which is weird. And then we're going to um, set, ooh, so I'm using a set variable here instead of change. We're going to set bomb velocity to, because we're using some multiplication here, and we can't change bomb velocity by something and then multiply it. So this is why we're doing this. We're going to go under our operators, we'll grab a multiplication sign, which remember is the one that's shaped like a little star over here. And so the reason for this is because we want it to go not in a straight line, but in a curve, right? We don't want it to steadily get faster. We want it to get faster and faster and faster. And when you multiply, that's how you get that kind of geometric growth, right? So let's go bomb velocity times 0 0.9. So this is the, the forward motion. It's going to slowly start to trail off as it moves. Okay. Now inside here, we need an if statement that's basically going to say if I hit the ground, or, then we're going to explode ourselves. Or if we hit any, uh, if we hit anything else, that's already taken care of because we know that if, if a fuel tank hits a bomb, that the bomb's going to explode itself and the fuel tank's going to explode itself. But we need something for if it hits the ground. So let's go do that. We'll say if touching ground, sensing, touching ground set explode x so what we're going to do is just give it that location again where the explosion is going to appear so um this is for when it hits the ground right we want it to hit the ground in the spot where the bomb disappears so we're going to have to set that variable so let's go to our variables i'm going to go set explode x to x position And I'm going to set explode Y to Y position. There we go. And we're going to do that. This is basically the same code we were using on that last item as well. So we're going to go create a clone of the explosion here. Create clone of explosion. And we're going to delete the clone of the bomb. Okay, good. And at the end of this, we're going to delete the bomb again. So if the bomb doesn't touch anything, it will still delete itself at the end, no matter what happens. So once it finishes running through all those code, oh, when it's touching the edge. So if it touches the edge, it'll delete it. If it's touching the ground, it'll also delete it. Okay, um, one, a couple more things that have to happen here. Um, all right, I'm going to grab one more thing that here that says, when I receive a message, let's go to our events. When I receive a message that says bomb exploded, remember we created that a little while ago, we're gonna delete the clone as well. And so what that will do is other things like crashing into a fuel tank will also delete the bomb, right? So uh, hitting the ground will delete the bomb, but we need other things to delete the bomb too. And that's what we're doing here. One more bit of code here. Let's actually test this right now and see how it works. And we're not quite ready yet, but I just wanna show you where we are on this. So moving forward, let's go up a little bit. We'll hit B for bomb. And you see our bombs are now falling and destroying stuff. The only problem is our animation looks wrong. The, the, the bomb is pointing down when it shouldn't be. So that's a really easy fix, guys. We're going to go into our when I, a new when I started the clone here. When I started the clone, here's where we control the animation. So the, we already have the bomb sound going off. And now we're just gonna switch costumes. So let's go to our look menu. We'll go, oh, actually we need a delay first. So let's go delay, wait, 
0 0.1 second. We don't want this animation running too fast or people won't be able to see it, right? And then we're gonna switch to costume. Oh, actually switch to costume one should go first. So switch to costume one, wait a second. And then we need to switch costume. Um, well, so there's different ways to do this. We could put this inside a loop, but let's just do it the old fashioned way. I'm gonna right click on switch costume. I'm gonna change this to costume two. So this is a bit wasteful, but I'm just showing you the, the different way to do this as well. So costume three and then costume four. All right, so that'll cycle it through all its costumes as it's falling and then it'll just stay in the down costume. Let me save my file and we'll test one more time. All right, let's try shooting some stuff. And you can shoot missiles as they're heading up as well. You can use it just like a bullet. Oh, you see things aren't killing us yet. We'll have to work on that in a second. All right, working beautifully. Our missiles look really cool, I think. It takes a little bit of timing to get these things from the bombing from high altitude. It's never an easy thing, guys. All right, uh, a few more things to do in the player. We'll handle that later. Um, let's just clean up a few more little things here. And we're getting close, guys, getting close. Uh, nothing happening in the chat. So I'm just going to plow through this, guys. Uh, now, we need to control the uh, a couple of things. The fuel gauge. Let's just clean up the last couple of items here. So we'll go fuel gauge. Um, and remember, we've got all the graphics here for our fuel as it's running out. We just need to add a little bit of code. Let's go to our events. We'll go when green flag clicked. We're going to initialize our fuel. We're going to fill up our fuel tank. Set fuel to 10. Remember I said we had a capacity of 10. Then we're just going to start bleeding off that variable. We're going to make the fuel start to dissipate. So I'm going to go switch. Um, all right, so we're going to change the fuel, basically, the fuel variable. But inside here, we're also going to make the costume change to be basically the amount of fuel. So when our fuel is 10, we're going to be on costume 10. When our fuel is on nine, we're gonna be on costume nine, etc., 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 like that. Oh, I think I made a little mistake here in costume 10. It should say fuel next to it. Oh no. This guy says fuel and it shouldn't, I think. Oh, it's just a green fuel. Okay, I'm gonna de delete this guy. I don't think we need him. Um. No, that's wrong. Hold it. I'm just going to leave this the way it is for now. I'm sure I did this for the right reason. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is tell it to switch costume to whatever the costume number is of the amount of fuel we have. So let's go to our look menu. We'll go switch costume to whatever that number is that our fuel is. So let's go to our variables. We'll grab a little fuel bubble and that will make it match what our fuel is. And we'll have our fuel go down every couple of seconds. So let's go to control. We'll say every two seconds, we'll change our fuel by minus one. Which means that if we don't pick up any fuel tanks along the way, we will run out of fuel in 20 seconds, basically. And um, that's how long you have to play the game. And then every time that you shoot a guy, you will gain an extra four seconds of life because each, uh, each fuel tank gives you two fuel and each fuel lasts for about two seconds. Does that make sense? All right, so uh, that's good. We've got another, another couple of things to do here. I've got a game over screen here. It's just a little invisible thing. We just want this to appear when the game over goes. So let's code that quickly. When green flag clicked. Um, did we already initialize our fuel amount? Yeah, we did. We don't have to do that here. I don't know why I did that here. Okay, so when green flag clicked, let's hide. And when I receive game over, we're gonna stop everything. So we'll go to events. When I receive, we don't have a game over yet, so let's create one. Game over. When I receive game over, we're gonna show. And then we're gonna stop all. All right, and that's it for that. Now I think we just have a few more things to do in the player. So none of that is worth testing because none of it is really, well, the fuel gauge will work. I guess let's test the fuel gauge out. 
Now we're not going to crash when the fuel runs out, but let's see. Yeah, so the fuel goes from green to red. Oh, it's the colors are all off here, though, way eh? that it should be yellow and then red, right? Let's go back and fix those fuel amounts, and then we're out of fuel. Okay, good. Okay, so I think I set up that fuel gauge wrong. Let's go back to it really, really quickly. It's just a matter of changing colors around, right? So the fuel, when I have 10, the fuel should be green. So let's grab that green color. Now this is a, this is just a little aesthetic thing, guys. Don't worry too much about it if you if it's not if it's not perfect. But now this is yellow, so let's go change that color to yellow. I think that's going to look better this way. Change it to yellow. Change it to yellow, and then we're going to. It's already red for the first couple of colors. So let's see if that looks a little bit better now. Yeah, almost three hours, Key. This is crazy. I'm. Uh, I will not be doing this again for three hours. This is a little bit long for you guys. Sorry, I wanted to try something new here, and I think it was not a good idea. So our fuel gauge is working properly now. That's beautiful. All right. So just a couple more things to do to the player, and then I promise you we'll be done, guys. We will be done before the three-hour mark. <laughs> mark my words. So um, there's a spot here where we have to make the ship um, crash into the ground. Uh, yeah, so there's another green flag that I didn't do here. So this is the last bit of code, I think. Uh, so we're back on the player ship. We have a new green flag here. So this is the bunch of events that has to do with colliding into stuff and dying, basically. So let's go repeat. When green flag clicked, repeat until. And we're going to repeat until we were dead, which means our lives are less than one. So let's grab a less than sign. Remember I use less than instead of equal to so that just in case something happens that makes our lives go down by two at once, like we hit two things that kill us simultaneously, it won't, if that make, if that happens, it might make our lives negative one, which means it'll never hit zero, which is a bad thing. So with lives, I like to go lives is less than one instead of equal to zero. Okay, now I need a massive if statement in here for all the things that I could crash into. There's so much deadly stuff on the screen. So I'm gonna go grab an if, uh, and I need a bunch of or statements because there's four different things we can crash into here. So I'm gonna grab a bunch of if statements until I have four slots to fill. That's three or statements here. And I'm gonna go touching. So if touching dome or touching fuel tank or touching the ground or where's the ground here or touching an enemy missile then we're going to kill ourselves how are we going to do that well we're going to use that same explosion command here so let's go to our variables we'll set explode x to x position i'm going to grab a y position while i'm here because i'm going to need that in a second we're going to go back to our variables we'll set explode y to y position then we're going to hide ourselves because we don't really want to delete our object it's not a clone it's an actual object so we're just going to hide it under our looks menu just so that we can't interact with it anymore. Then we're gonna create a clone of our explosion on that right spot. So we'll go create clone of explosion. Then we're gonna change our lives because we've just gotten killed. So we'll go change lives. Change lives by minus one. Uh, we've already set our fuel. We don't have to do that. We're gonna wait two seconds so after we die oh yeah yeah so after we die we have to reset our fuel or did i already do that doesn't matter we can reset it here anyway so we're going to go to our variables we'll set fuel to 10.
and we're gonna wait two seconds. We're gonna die for two seconds and then respawn ourselves. So we'll go to control. We'll wait two seconds. Oh, I will save, sure. Two seconds. My eyes are on fire right now, says Kian. Yeah, he's been looking at the screen a little bit too long. I'm feeling the same way. This is too long, guys. I apologize one more time. All right, we're gonna go back to the start position and our start position is just X of zero and Y of 150. And then we're gonna show ourselves again, which will restart the game. So we'll go to our look menu and show, I think we should be done now. Let's just make sure I haven't missed anything. We'll give a quick play test of the game. Let me save, maximize our screen and give her a try here. So we're going over our ground. And keep, drop some bombs. So let me die a couple more times just to make sure everything's cool here. Now if you wanted to build on this game, what I would suggest is having some spaceships coming off the screen and maybe shooting at you or whatever. That's kind of a more advanced situation. Oh, we're not dying here. What are our, where are our lives? Okay, so there's one other little problem, which is that we're not dying and we don't see our variables as well. So I've got... Um, I've got a variable here called score, or sorry, a, a screen here called score and lives. You can see it at the right hand side here. All it has is some writing on it. I've hidden it. So let's show it. It doesn't actually have any code in it. It's in the right spot already. So I want those variables to show up in these spots here. So let's go um, to show variables. We'll go to our variables. I'm going to click on the beside the score and click the check mark. And I'm going to click beside lies and click the check mark there. That's going to make those variables appear on the screen here. Though for you, though, they might appear as a normal readout. You just have to right click on them and turn them into a large readout and then move them over here like that. Good. All right. So our lives are zero and we and our game didn't end. So something's still wrong with my code. Let's have a quick look here again. So I'm going to deliberately kill myself. I've got three lives. <laughs> Two lives, one life, zero lives, and our game didn't end. So what's going on here? We're, let's go back to the player. Repeat until, oh, so at the end, sorry, I missed a couple blocks at the very end. So in this beginning block here, repeat until lives are less than one. And then when we're done, when our lives are less than one, here's where we broadcast that message. We're gonna go broadcast, game over. Uh, there it is, game over. And we're gonna stop other scripts in this sprite. What that's gonna do is stop your ship from moving or anything like that. Stop other scripts in this sprite. If you wanna stop everything else, like the missiles, you can do that same thing for them as well. So let's go over to the enemy missiles. And we'll tell it when I receive game over. When I receive game over, then we're going to stop other scripts in this sprite as well. Stop other scripts in this sprite. So that's just going to stop everything moving while we wait for the uh, game over to appear. Okay, I think we should be good now. Let me just kill myself. Which is kind of what I feel like doing after three hours of this. Two lives, last life, there we go. And then game over, okay. <sighs> all right, I think we learned something here, guys. I tried to do things a little bit differently. I tried to cram it all into one session and man, that's a marathon. Those of you who are watching on YouTube, you have the ability to just pause whenever you want and maybe give up and come back later. But you guys who've been stuck through this whole thing on the live stream, I really appreciate your patience. Um, I'd like you to, to, to get back to me and tell me a little bit about this. If you have any comments, you can mention it in the... Uh, uh, so what's Kian saying here? This is even longer than a Jeffrey lesson. Yeah, it is. So I think this is going to not end up working this way in the past. We're in the future. We're going to find a shorter way to do this. I'm going to go back and regroup. If anyone has any ideas of how they would like to see it, doing this in three sessions a week isn't going to work either. So how can we make this work? I'm happy to have your ideas, guys. In the meantime, I'm definitely going to be back 
Saturday at 10 o'clock. It'll be just me, and then after that, it'll be Jeffrey and me for uh, for the rest of the summer, probably. And uh, we'll keep modifying this and playing around, and we'll find a way to make this work. And it's exactly three hours, so I'm going to say goodbye now. Thank you for your patience, everybody, and I will see you next week. Nice to be back again. <laughs>